So, in the first part of this stream, we went through and discovered uh, kind of the problems that we were having with some of the vectorized emulation designs. Um, and we kind of came up with a couple solutions. Uh, Dave FDW came up with a, another solution um, that looks actually 100% valid. I don't think there are any situations where this wouldn't work. Uh, but he was basically saying that we could fragment the um, the branch indirex into their own blocks, and then that means we'd put the reset location to the block that contains the branch indirect. Since that C register will not be modified um, when the processor goes to execute other things, uh, it should be fine to just set this block as the execution point. That being said, uh, while I do think this works, I don't think there's anything technically wrong with this. Um, I do think that uh, just implementing the, the branch indirect to um, kind of query and perform the walks to resolve all of those branches is probably going to be ideal. It'll keep everything in a more generic state, and since it'll put it on the C side of these uh, branches rather than on this side, it means we'll be able to get a little bit more remerging behavior. Because like if these two end up branching to the same location, uh, we could potentially pull some of the different uh, paths back online. Whereas if we go with this block shape, we're going to end up kind of gating things in their own blocks. Um, I think until I was comfortable committing with doing the parallel walk, uh, this is a much better design than what I was going to go down the path of, having the, the different uh, PC modes. Um, but I think we're just going to try and do it full bore and, and finish it out the correct way. So... It's hard to say here, so let me see. Um, not touching any of those registers. Allocations don't matter because they're scoped. Ah, uh, yeah, I think, I think we literally can just, just do it. So that means we're gonna basically end up going down a path where um, we're gonna be using ZMM thirty one as the PC effectively. So here, when I'm using PC as 8, um, these are undefined. Prior to actually lifting or executing anything, I think I'm going to... Well, I have to lift to get the unique identifier. But I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to move my lifting code into a, uh, another function. And then at the very start of execution, I'm going to grab PC. I'm going to pick the most popul uh, popular PC value. Um, I might actually assert that all of them are online as well. I might not allow starting execution without all the VMs online. I'm not sure if that's something I want to do or not. Uh, but I need to... I don't think there's any situation where I'd have things starting from different locations. So I think what I'm going to do is make sure that at least all the PCs that are online are... Uh, the same value. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift in this initial state, we're going to lift the, the first function, the first graph. We're going to grab the unique identifier for block zero and we're going to slam that into ZMM31. And from that point on, in that execution, we're never going to reference PC again, uh, which would make everything much more resilient to not caring about PC, which I think is is the correct direction for us to go, but I, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it a little bit as we write this code. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to pull out all of that. We can get rid of this. Um, <laughs> the if statement protecting us from destroying everything. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have... I think I only care about the JIT address, the JIT entry address. I don't care about this yet. So I think this is what I'm going to do. I think. Um, Ooh, planar ski games. Okay, pub fn. Um, 
We're gonna call this lift, list. Even my typing has a lisp. Okay, we're gonna do mute self. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna return yet, but we'll put this in here. Jit entry address, we're not gonna have that. We're gonna return that. Uh, this is gonna take a PC value, which is gonna be a vert adder. We're gonna return at least a U size. Um, this sort of logic, I think I actually want down. We'll worry about tabbing this stuff around as we figure it out a little bit more. Run, while they're not all enabled. Okay, so uh, this is what happens when we first go to execute something. Print going to start executing something for the first time. Uh, we don't return out of run until everything has been exited, all of the VMs have exited. So we're gonna go put this back in here. That's kind of the logic we're gonna want, roughly. We're gonna wanna reformat this. I think I can do that. Yes, I can. Uh, one more tab. Uh, oh. Hmm. I changed my Vim config, and now I have to hold shift when I'm doing copies, and I'm not sure if I like that too much. Okay. If self aisle cache contains key target path. Um, yeah, target path. We're going to change all these to PC. PC. Lifting. Don't really need that right now. This will take the PC. I might need to pass in a couple other variables. I'm not sure yet. PC. Insert that into the aisle cache. Look up the graph and the JIT address. Um, and yeah, I think we're just going to actually we might just return that out directly. And that's probably going to be a reference to a tuple of aisle graph. You size? <laughs> Something like that? Might be ballpark. I, I don't think that's this is gonna be like a wall of errors. Aisle session we don't have. That's easy. We just need to pass that as an argument. Oops. Uh, I guess I have generics here. You know, did I actually put? Oops. Did I ever put the aisle session in self? That's an aisle VM. Nope. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, FM lift. And then we just boop. All right, that might uh, get close to building. That's actually really close to building. Uh, yeah, that's not target path, that's PC. Expected arc aisle graph. Oh, gorgeous. That's actually really nice. That means I can do this. I can return an arc aisle graph. That makes sense. Um, then I can just clone this because that's a cheap operation. Nice. And now I get access to that graph. This is not going to work. It'd be great if that worked. If I just moved code around and it just kind of worked now. Yeah, no JIT address. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to get the PCs. Uh, going to start executing something for the first time. It's going to print the PCs that it wants to execute. It's going to get the target path, which it's going to determine from the most frequent out of the non-faulted VMs, which is all of them. So pick the most frequent PC value. So the most common PC value, because we want to start off executing the most common path, the most parallelism. Not that it matters too much, because we'd go back and re-execute them. Then down here, I'm going to do a, a self-online mask raw. So this is going to compute the online mask. It's going to figure out which ones are going to go down this target path. And then it's going to mask off the uh, faulted VMs. 
and then we're gonna make sure that not all the VMs are disabled, uh, which is where we're uh, actually we're not faulting there. That makes sense. Then here, while there's something to do, we're going to uh, get the JIT address, and that's where that's where we're crashing now. Perfect, makes sense. So we should have online and faulted. So all eight VMs are online. Zero of them are faulted. That looks fantastic. Um, so what I want to do is I want to now decode that PC, uh, and I'm going to do it outside here. So I'm actually going to have this, that return to Algraph. I think we're going to have that return a U64. Actually, lift is always going to be centered around I label zero. You know what? I'm still going to do it. Um... Be the death of me. If the local cache does not contain PC, then we look up the master cache and create a copy from there. If it's not in the master cache, then we're going to have to lift that, optimize it, dump dots, uh, wrap it up in an arc so we can clone it and share it, create the assembly, jit it out, drop the assembly so we don't free that, uh, add these uh, graph entry points. This is... Uh, this is giving the PC, the target PC address, into the JIT base address that we can perform translations on. We're updating the master cache. We're cloning the graph multiple times. So uh, I think we're going to need to change that potentially. No, that actually works. So the way this code effectively works, if we, if we go through it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so this function will call, uh, and we'll pass it a PC that we want to lift, and then this IL session, which is basically the shared state between all the cores, that allows us to dedupe some of the things that we're doing and not create copies for every single core. Um, technically, we want to copy every NUMA node, but whatever. Okay, so if the if the local IL cache does not contain the IL graph corresponding to this PC entry, then we know that we need to go to the master, which is in the IL session. So we grab the lock on the IL session, we do a query from the master cache. If the master cache does indeed have a copy of the graph corresponding to this PC, then we can copy that out and we don't have to relift. Otherwise, we are the first person ever, since we had this lock, we're the first uh, core on the machine to have run into this PC, unless we're going to perform a, a request to lift. So we're going to get access to the target VM in the MMU, which is pretty straightforward. It's just making variables. Um, start a timer here for statistics. We create a graph. Uh, this is creating a new empty graph. And then I request that the target VM lifts the instruction at PC, and I give it access to the MMU so it can read and write memory. So if we take a look at our VM, this is for testing. This is not a real emulator in this case. Uh, but this lift function gets invoked by that. And that's where I populate the graph with the IL instructions that are required for whatever I'm lifting or whatever I want to do. Then I return out OK. That modified the IL graph in place. And at this point, I've now recorded the statistics of how many cycles I've spent uh, lifting code, how much time I've spent in this, this lift function, basically, and a little bit creating the graph. We then optimize the graph. We perform all of our optimization passes on the IL. We dump dot. That's uh, writing the dot file, which is the graph. It's writing that uh, to disk, which is just for debugging. We'll turn that off on release builds. Uh, and then we validate the graph. Once again, that's for debugging only, but that's going to make sure that things like SSA form are verified, make sure that the um, any place that an IL register is used, it has been created in the dominators such that it's accessible, if that makes sense. So it kind of validates some of the shape of the graph because uh, there is nothing stopping you from making an invalid IL if you do everything raw. Um, then we wrap up the graph in an arc so we can share it between all the cores. We get access to the global JIT. Um, uh, yeah, and we get access to the JIT memory and the constant storage database. So the JIT memory 
uh, is what's the RWX memory that we write the instructions to and execute out of. The constant store is literally just a database of constants that we reference during the assembly. So that's where we put things uh, that are too complex to load as immediate. So we put them into memory and then we just fetch them directly into registers rather than doing some weird immediate shuffles. Uh, then I create an assembly block, and this is going to give me access to an assembly stream that I can assemble onto, and then the base address of the assembly stream that it created. I'm going to start another timer for how much time I'm spending jitting, and then here I'm going to pass all of this information. I'm going to jit the graph, the aisle graph, to this assembly block. I give it access to the constant storage database. I give it access to some of these hard-coded JIT functions that it can call, like helper routines in the JIT, things like uh, reading and writing memory that are complex, and we don't want to JIT them every t single time. And then I pass it the uh, code coverage JIT. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the JIT template that's called when code coverage needs to be reported. Once again, it's a commonly used piece of code, so it's cheaper to put it in a function. So I generated that JIT very early on, and I'm just giving it access uh, to that so it knows what address to call when it, when it performs a call to that routine. Then I have graph entries. So this JIT, uh, this JIT is actually going to um, return a vector that contains the um, PC values and their corresponding um, JIT addresses. So this is, this is basically since... Um, Calls are the only special case. So in a graph, I can enter from the top. Uh, let's look at one of these examples. So in my IL, I'm allowed to enter at the top of the JIT, or I can enter right after a call instruction, and that's it. And the reason for that is the optimizations don't allow me, like, the optimizations might merge some instructions together that would prevent me from being able to jump into an arbitrary instruction in a block. So if I had to jump into an arbitrary instruction in a block, I want to relift that as a whole new graph. Unfortunately, it sucks, um, but that's really all I can do. So this database during the JIT is going to be accumulating all of the addresses of calls in this vector, which is this PC to JIT vector. And we're going to see that this is only used in two spots, the return and in this push. So uh, here we generate the code for a branch indirect or a call. Right now they're the same. And at the very end, after all of the instructions have been generated, I say, um, uh, let's see, uh, if this was a call instruction, then I am going to uh, save this return address, which is the entry point, uh, and the JIT location at this point. So we just JITted out all this code. The next instruction is going to start right here in the assembly. Uh, obviously, it will be in another iteration in another match statement. But I'm basically recording that this this is the address directly after a call, and this is, this is the JIT address that corresponds to it. And then we return that. So this will end up returning that list of all PCs to uh, JIT locations. Now, that didn't include the base of the entire JIT itself, so I add that here. So this graph entries that I return from the JIT, I then push the PC, the raw PC that we lifted the entire graph of, and then the base address of the whole JIT section. So now this graph entries will contain um, all of the entry points uh, after call sites and the JIT addresses, and then the JIT address for the base PC. Um, and then I'm going to go through for all of these graph entries, for all the target PC to JIT B PC mappings, I'm going to insert into the master cache uh, the target PC, uh, and then I'm going to map that to the graph, which I'm going to do a clone since it's, in, since it's in an arc. It's just ref counted, so it's not actually a expensive copy. It's just incrementing a, a reference count atomically. And then the JIT PC. And then finally, I update this branch table. And I, I, that is the table that I actually use during uh, branch indirect. And the branch table is what I use to walk here to determine that translation. So this is updating that database and saying that this target PC will map to this JIT PC. And I just do that for all the different locations in there, update statistics, return that to the graph and base, then I update the local IL cache with that graph as well, and then that's it, that's done. So at this point, the local IL cache and the master IL cache have a copy of this, 
And here I can just return a cloned variant of that that will return the, um, this is going to return the, uh, an arc referencing the aisle graph. Uh, u size, which is the JIT entry address, and then I'm going to add one more field, which is going to be the um, this U64, which is going to be the uh, hmm. Actually, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if I want to do it that way. I'm trying to think about it. I'm trying to think if we'll ever call lift, other than the 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 first time I go through, I'll call lift. I'll call lift for every PC in indirect branches. Um, if they're in the cache, uh, indirect branches are going to go... Indirect branches might actually go to... Like a return as an indirect branch, and that might go to a call site, which means I might call lift, and it might go to a subcomponent, so I do need this U64. Okay. So the U64 that I'm going to store in that tuple uh, is going to be the block ID. Ooh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, so the problem is after a call, we don't have a new block which means I don't have a block identifier for the location directly after a call, which means if I'm calling lift because of a branch indirect to a return address, um, huh, huh. That's actually really tough. I could potentially use the JIT addresses as a unique location identifier because it is. Um, that's kind of an interesting concept. I would have to go and update them. I would have to like back propagate those because I would have to fill them in because I might not have generated the assembly for a given block yet when I go to fill that in, but I could do fix ups. Fix ups wouldn't be too difficult to add. Uh, I have to fix up the constant store database, which is really tough. Ooh, I'm not actually sure. Hmm. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Uh, could I make blocks after calls? Um. Trying to think now. I need to have a database. Basically, what I need to do is I need to have a way of converting the, yeah, I need a way of converting the, hmm, hmm, I need a way to convert the branch or the block identifier, the unique block identifier into a JIT PC. I don't necessarily care about the aisle graph, but I need to be able to go from a unique block identifier to a JIT PC. There's a unique block identifier for every conditional branch. That's pretty straightforward. That exists, so I can get that mapping, but I can't. And there's a unique ID for the entry of functions, but there's not a unique ID for after a call. I do not have a unique identifier for after a call. Um, yikes, yikes, I could create a new unique ID, I think I could, 
I could literally just make a unique ID. It doesn't necessarily have to correspond. Look up label unique ID. Take a label and get a unique identifier. But I'm pretty sure I can just create a unique identifier on a call. Get entry labels. Traverses the graph to identify all PCs which can be executed directly in this graph. So these are all the PC values following a call. Uh, these locations can be arbitrarily ex executed without having prologs. Yep. So we've got, that's just gonna go through and compute all of those. Um, and that's returning, that's returning the PC values, all PCs, get entry labels, allocate label. Here's where I do the, uh, I, uh, I create a new unique identifier. I think, I think I can just allocate one. I'm pretty sure. Um, I can't, I can't use the JIT address as a unique identifier because I haven't necessarily lifted, although I will lift with this new model. Boy, these are tough decisions. If I use the JIT address, I think the JIT address just works. But I'd ha I would have to do fix-ups. And then I'd have no way, where do I use that? Label to unique. Items just here. Uh, unique ID. I'm not using it at all there. Here I'm creating it. There I'm setting it. There I'm looking it up. Here I'm using it. I think this is the only spot that I actually use that unique ID right now. So if I were to switch to using the JIT PC value, now that would be me committing to not having a JIT that can remove and clean up instructions, but I think that's the case. I don't really plan. I think I can do that. Um... These broadcasts, I don't think I can put in the constant store anymore. Oh, I could fix up these instructions. They should be fixed with instructions. The CS offset should be a fixed location. And then I can resolve all the IDs. And then how will I get the PC? I guess I'll get the PC. Uh, I think I still need the unique identifiers. No, I don't actually. Because I'm gonna, I'll resolve all labels inside of a graph, I think. Oh boy. Oh boy, I'm spooked. I'm s oh. Oh. Uh, the constant store. That's going to be an offset into the database. Whew. All right. I think we're going to do it. I think the JIT address is going to be the unique address. I guess we're gonna just put zero in here. Oh my God, this is so spooky. Oh my God. You, you know what we do before we do spooky things? We do one of these bad boys. Get status, get commit, 
git commit am about to remove unique IDs and switch them to JIT PCs. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we can uh, now we can do crazy things. Yeah. Yeah. Block ID. We make an assembly label. Can I leverage that? Can I leverage the fact that I have an assembly label? I don't think so. Do I have a way in my assembler to look up the address of a label? I think I do. Folk al source. Oops. Folk asm. Don't look at this code, it's bad. Don't look at this code, it's bad. Label. Resolve label. Attempt to resolve the offset in a stream which this label references. If no such label exists, return none. Okay. Attempts to get the absolute address of a given, given label. Oh, that's gonna add the base address. That's what I want. So that's gonna get the the, the JIT address of a label, we label every block in our JIT. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think we can do this. So we're going to do let mute fix ups. It's equal to vec new. Uh, list of IL label JIT addresses which need to be replaced. Um, vector is, uh, tuple containing, uh, we'll say tuple, tuple is, what is this going to be? This is going to be the, uh, JIT address of VP broadcast Q, which needs fix up. And then the label, which <laughs> label which needs to be converted to a JIT address and uh, put in CSBC as an argument. CSBC is the constant storage broadcast. Um, so I think we're going to have, this is going to be an aisle label. Okay, so, a uh, unique ID. So I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna say that fixups.push asm dot, what do I have, address? Base, fn, next PC, next. Shit, what do I call it? Pub FN. Get instruction address. Okay. Push the get instruction address. And I'm going to push that this needs to get the false target. FTG, FTGT. And we're going to temporarily constant storage uh, a zero. Uh, the constant zero is going to be in the constant storage table, so I just don't care. Uh, that'll just give us something, a valid address that'll be there. This one will do the same thing, and we'll say this instruction is going to hold a VP broadcast quad word that needs to be, that needs its memory operand updated with the true target address at the very end. Good? Jeez. Okay, then this can return the U size. Okay, get inst adder, yep. And I think we're gonna need to deref the target, no problem. And then we can get rid of these unique IDs. Uh, storm to ZMM, the unique, uh, storm to the, JIT address 
for the true target. False targets filled in with their chip addresses. These are fixed. Uh, these are fixed up after JIT is complete, and thus the labels will resolve. Okay. And that fits on one line. Damn right it does. Yes. <laughs> I didn't see when the yes message went out. I don't know what the yes was for. <laughs> now I'm shook. Perfect. Okay. So that builds now at the very end. So this is gonna be like radically wrong. I mean, it'll it'll build. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna assertion fail, cause we're like in the thick of it. Yes, and overall, just yes, yes, you sir. <laughs> ah! Okay. Uh, I'm gonna kill unique identifiers. I think I can. I think I can. The little unique identifier that could. <sighs> Dude, I fucking- I love deleting code, but god damn am I scared that I'm gonna have to be putting all this shit right back in. Bye bye! That's gone. This goes away. Uh, this goes away. This goes away. <laughs> uh, oh, it's dead. Honestly, that's still fine. That's not going to be a valid address. Um, honestly, we're going to actually make that non-canon. Oh, that, you know what? This is actually working out okay. Does this build? Expects a parameter. You know what? I should have kept that open. Folk Isle source Isle graph mod. FN new. Bye bye. Unique. I'll level type. Yep, perfect. Okay, that should be gone. Uh, 24. That is in Rand graph. Folk Isle source Isle graph Rand graph new. Come on. Okay, we can get rid of ordering Arc Atomic U64. Atomic Pointer. What we got? Here. Uh, Atomic U64. Oh, an aisle session. Oh, I must have put that in another line. Yeah, I did. Ugh. Gross. Aisle label not being used in aisle session. Ah, that will be used. And the jits, I'm not having recording the perf right now. And that's some stuff I don't care about. Okay, uh, that should be good. So now, uh, I need to figure out the shape of those instructions. Do I have NASM? I do. Uh, stream term vim test.asm bits 64 org ox0 doesn't really matter. VP broadcast q zmm0 uh, k1 mask uh, r10 plus. Five hundred. I think that's the constant storage. Fuck. My assembler might be too smart. Uh, cause it's gonna look. It, yeah, R eleven index times eight. And my assembler is gonna know that it can reduce that. I'm pretty sure. Like this. Uh. Fucking assembler, man. This is why I need to not write nice things. NASM F bin test test dot asm O test dot bin and dis asm 
test up in. Yeah, so if we had 300 there, that will turn into a different instruction size. And I need to make sure that this instruction is always the full size instruction. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually implement this for this one case here. And I'm going to overload it. Whoops. Uh, CS macro rules right here. So this memory operand, this is, this is going to be technically better. Um, CS zero. So instead of hacking in that constant store, this will get fixed up. And now I can actually make this, uh, that'll probably be invalid. So this would actually cause a crash if we were to execute this instruction, which is good. Um, cause these need to get fixed up. Uh, negative one actually isn't good enough. Let's go like negative dead. That should ensure that it is a, um, that's going to use the, this encoding. Uh, negative dead. Oh, I didn't build it. Okay, so this is the instruction that we should generate. Um, we're always broadcasting to ZMM31. So you know what? I can actually be like really picky about this. And I can assert that it's exactly equal to this. You know what? Oops. ZMM31 K1... So I can either fix up just the dead part, which will always be at the same offset. Uh, you know, I'm just going to do this. Dead, dead. D-E-A-D, D-E-A-D. That should be good. So hopefully I can do that here. It might not like this. I might have to find the negative version of this, but that's fine. I can I can always grab that. Oops, it was this screen. Sorry. I don't know if my assembler is gonna actually take that. It might not be happy with that. Um, we'll worry about that when we get to it. So here I'm going to assert. Um. Let's fix up address is equal to asm.get instruction adder. This is so we can do this. Fua. We emit one instruction. I'm going to assert that asm.get inst adder minus fua is exactly equal to uh, that many bytes. I'm just going to add a nop so I can see the counter. Uh, 10 bytes. So we're going to make sure that that is exactly 10 bytes because that's going to be important for our fix-ups. We don't want to end up... Uh... Okay. And this is the false target. So we have a false target broadcast. Yeah, because these k-masks are different, we don't actually want to hard-code these. So this will use k-mask. This will use temp k-mask. We're going to record the address, and then we're going to make sure that we emit 10 bytes, which will guarantee that we have the right encoding, which means that we can jump uh, this many bytes into it. 10 minus 4, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep. So 6 bytes after that address, we can write in the new address. Oh, there's like... Whoa, is that a bobcat? I'm trying to figure out what just walked by. I I saw it walk by before. It might just be a feral cat, but it's got like a really short tail or like no tail at all. What? Unless its tail is curled up? Oh, it's limping. Oh no. 
Oh, dude, that cat probably got fucked up. Dude, nature is so goddamn scary. Dude, I think he... Oh, man, dude. I feel like I saw that cat run by like two days ago. There are like bears and all kinds of shit out here. It's, it's, it's not a safe place to be if you're a, a small little cat running around. All right. Uh, get the instruction address. And assert that it's equal to 10 bytes and then at the end. So this should fault. Unless I have dead, dead bytes. Uh, that should crash. Uh, let's see. Do I want to just get this up and running? No JIT address. Let's let's see if we can get this up and running. I want to make sure that this crashes because it is really important to me that this does not work correctly uh, when we don't fill in those fix-ups. I want this to catastrophically fail. Uh, that's really important to me. So we're going to go into aisle session. Uh, here we have lift. Uh, lift takes a PC aisle session. It gets the graph and the U size. We do correctly give the PCs for those targets. I'll cache, PC graph, it would relook it up. We put it into the master, we put it in the branch table. Um, that'll end up pulling it from master, PC graph. Target PC. I, I think this is okay. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to resolve it. We're going to say let, uh, this is the graph and the JIT adder is equal to self dot lift PC uh, target path. I think we called it an aisle session. Lift the target instruction. And this is going to print lifted this. Jit adder. Woo! Get inst adder. Oh, I typoed. Okay. So that's going to be the JIT address. Uh, that looks fantastic. So we have a JIT address to that. The JIT address is going to be, we're going to get a different JIT address for every function entry point and after every call. That sounds good. PCs are X. Target path is X. Um, okay, so we're going to use the JIT address as the unique identifier now. So we're going to do a You know, I'm just going to add this because it makes me feel more comfortable assert self dot online dot um, all enabled and self dot uh, faulted VMs dot all disabled um, make sure that all VMs are running. So that makes sure that everything is enabled. And then in this case, uh, we can simplify a lot of this. Well, that's going to be based on PC. I guess we don't know that. Son of a bitch. We're going to get the PCs. We're going to find the most frequent path. We're then going to splat out the most frequent path. We're going to find which ones are equal to that to get a mask. We're going to mask off the faulted VMs. Uh, we're going to assert that something is enabled. Uh, assert that they're not all disabled. And then while they're... While all the faulted VMs are not... Okay. So if there's nothing to run, then we have a big issue. In this case, we're going to lift the target path to get the JIT address. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, we're going to change this. Makes sense now. Okay. 
So, this is the only location where we're going to use PCs uh, and when we do indirect branches. So, we're gonna actually going to resolve all the PCs. So, we're going to uh, resolve all the target addresses. Get the PCs for VMID, PC, in PC, uh, self.getregs, T, PC reg. So go through all of the, and then we'll uh, enumerate this. We might have to do dot iter. Then I'm going to lift to get the JIT address. And then I'm going to do self dot. State that aisle regs here. So this is the ZMM31, which holds that unique identifier, which is now just going to be the JIT address, which makes so much more sense. I think I was just too lazy before to do this. Um, we're going to split uh, to see vectorized and see how I insert, replace, replace a value of a single lane. That's what I want to do. We'll replace at VMID. We're going to replace it with the... JIT adder. So now, self.state.ilregs31. So we start up. Who cares about which VMs are online or not? Uh, because we're going to decide that for the first time now. Um, resolve all the target addresses. So this is going to... Um, actually, we will assert that uh, self.online.all enabled. And self dot online dot or self dot uh, faulted VMs dot all disabled. Make sure all VMs are online and ready to run. Uh, that's going to be the JIT address that we're going to use. Then here, go through each of the PCs for the VM identifiers. Lift that. Uh, and that's basically just so we can get the JIT address. And then we're going to replace, uh, in IL31, we're going to replace VMID uh, with the JIT address. And then at this point, uh, print PCs X. This will be self.getregs T PC reg. Oh, target path. Yeah, we don't have target path, uh, PC. So we go through every PC. This will actually allow us to execute VMs from completely different PCs from the very start, uh, which is actually going to be a really cool feature. I don't think I'm ever going to use it. Uh, but, you know, I like having features if I can. If I can get them for free, I might as well. Uh, it or not found on vector. Um, I think... Don't judge me for this. That'll cause the deref. Ah, oh, vector. Okay, I must have a... I, I swear I have a way of getting the sliced version. Maybe I just have it pub? No, I don't. Vector, new, splat, replace, merge, equal, not equal, set less than... Huh. Um, I think I have iter on mask. Mask iter, I do. Actually, is vector with... Yeah, we're going to do this. For VMID and zero dot dot... Uh, vectorized vector with... Then I'll do a let PC is equal to self. Uh, get reg. That takes the mask. Yeah, we're going to do that. Self dot get reg takes a mask. So we'll give it VMID. Um... And this is mask single VMID. Let PC 
get the PC for this, uh, get the PC value for this VM, get the JIT address, uh, lift the function at PC and get the JIT address. Then, yeah, so lift the function at PC and get the JIT address. Then this is update the uh, branch target register with the JIT address. And that's replacing for this VM ID. So for a single VM ID, we get the PC register. We then lift that PC with this IL session and then we replace and this should work. Okay. What's that complaint about? 398 PC wants a vert adder. Now it's a vert adder. Oh, it's building. So we should see the same JIT address for all of them. The same PC for all of them and the same JIT address for all of them because that's kind of how we have it configured right now. So PCs, all the same. And then the JIT address is all the same. Fucking fantastic. And that's saying requesting a lifting of leet. So what I'm going to do is vm.setreg mask single th three uh, register PC uh, one. And I think I have this set up if it's, uh, if PC is not equal to leet, then it will return that fault. And I should have, we'll just do this. Since this is temporary, I'm not going to actually pull in mask. Vectorized. Ah. Okay, so this will put one on a different path. What do we get? Uh, lane, 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 this one's PC1, same, 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 different, same, 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 lifted, nice, okay. Yeah, there's no reason that shouldn't have worked. So, yeah, we went through every vector, everything should be enabled when we enter, we got the PC, we then lift for that location, we replace that in the branch target. Uh, the branch targets, of, of course, are unique because that's literally the address that we're going to execute in the JIT. It can't get any more unique than that. Perfect. So now, this is trying to figure out the JIT address. So JIT resolve cycles. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Shit resolve. Okay. Should build. So that's gonna fail. Uh, no JIT address, which will be nice. Okay. So then I want to get a uh, JIT address. Okay. I apparently, say that a couple times. Whoa. No JIT address. So here. Um, this, we need to create the JIT address, so we need to figure out what address to run. So to do this, I'm going to do self.state.ilregs31.mostfrequent. <laughs> Let JIT, uh, JIT entry adder equals sum. Uh, pick the most common JIT address. What does most frequent return? That's going to return, ooh, based on the mask. So the most frequent out of the not disabled VMs, self.faulted VMs, pick the most common JIT address out of all of the VMs which ha still can be run, have not faulted. So pick them. This is going to find. Uh, let's common JIT is equal to this. So, ILRAGS31, which has the JIT addresses, pick the most frequent value, the most common value, and we're going to pick it from the set of mask 
from raw, I think, of non-faulted VMs. So that uh, print common path is uh, x common jit. So there's something to run, so that mask will return something. You're the only one I ever know. Can I actually just invert that? Because that's a mask? Or do I need to do dot raw? Did I implement not? Oh, dot star not for mask? Fuck yeah. Okay. So for non faulted VMs, find the most common path. This is going to say the most common path is 14. Of course, we have one FC in here, but that's not the common path, so we don't care about it. So now we have the common path here, and then figure out which VMs are executing this same JIT and update the online mask. So we'll do uh, self.online is equal to um, assert. Uh, so the self.online is going to be equal to common uh, vector splat common JIT. Splat will basically broadcast the common JIT to all lanes. And then we're going to say the online mask is going to come from regs 31equal Figure out which VMs are executing the same, uh, this same JIT and update the online mask. So look up Isle regs 31 and figure out which ones are equal to the common JIT path, and that will update the online mask. So we'll say print online mask computed to be uh, B self.online. And then here I'm going to assert that self.online. Assert that the self online mask is equal. Uh, ooh, self online and bit and okay. Uh, self dot faulted VMs. So if we mask, do I want to invert that? Yeah. Uh, dot all disabled. Um, brought VM online that was faulted. This is only possible if ZMM31 wasn't correctly updated with garbage on a faulting VM. So this assertion is basically here. Um, so this assertion is basically here to uh, validate that no VMs have a valid JIT address that have been faulted. And that's just a, a pretty strict check that's just going to make sure that we don't end up bringing anything online. Um, and basically, any time that we set a faulted VM, we indicate that a VM is faulted, we need to clobber the uh, ZMM31 entry for that VM to indicate that there's nothing that that wants to JIT anymore. If we don't clobber that, then it's actually going to be invalid on the JIT side of things. So this assertion is, is really important. Um, online mask computed to be B. So let's see what we get here. Uh, binary not implemented for mask. It is implemented for raw. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we got here. All right. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so vector mass or online mass computed to be this. We see that one got masked off, and that is the zero, one, two, third lane, bit three. Uh, or bit, yeah, bit three um, is masked off because that's not going to execute the same thing. That's perfect, exactly what we want. We're going to start executing this JIT address with this online mask, which will cause one of the VMs to not get updated because we're not executing the correct instructions for that VM. That assertion is really good, and we should be failing. Ooh, brought a, a VM online that was faulted. You son of a bitch. 
assert that online and do I want this? If online and faulted VMs is all this, that's what I wanted. Yeah, so this is going to check. Uh, so that will end with zero in this case, which is true, all disabled. Uh, but if some of them are faulted, it's going to make sure that they're not set in online. I don't, I don't know why I inverted that. Happens. So this will pass that assertion check because it's going to end with zero. Uh, and then we're going to get to the assertion that there's no JIT address, which is good. So at this point, we can now say uh, let JIT entry adder is equal, or JIT entry adder is equal to sum. Uh, and this is going to be common JIT. Uh, set up that we are ready to execute at this address. I know we're just going to take it right here. There's kind of no reason to do this. Um, but I think I might end up changing the semantics a little bit here. So I'm just going to leave that. Uh, JIT entry address never read here. Yes, that is true. It, that is true. That is never read. Bam. Thank you, Rust. Okay, so that's going to go, and I think that's going to start running the JIT. Now, this should crash. Uh, wow, what do we got? Uh, head N50. Let's see what we got here. You know, I'm going to move this. I'm just going to close that. I don't think I need it up right now. Okay, so here are all of the PCs we want to execute. Then we have all the JIT addresses we want to execute. And then here, entering with mask F7, which is correct. Uh, then I get an MMU fault on an access, accessing 8, which is fine. I then have, yeah, two of them end up faulting. They get masked off. Enter with E3. Ooh. Is, is this, can this work right now? You know, I probably shouldn't have closed that. Uh, stream term. I knew I was going to regret it. Uh, <laughs> what do we have written right now? This is the block that we have. We have two labels. We're going to get B, we're going to read from B, we're going to read from A, we're going to branch indirect to A. So we're going to read from B, zero is valid. I only map in three byte, or eight bytes here, so eight will fault. So these VMs, two VMs will fault on reading, which we should see. Uh, we have an access violation on one four mask. So this is the four, and that's the one. You have to read it backwards, which is kind of confusing. Um, but there's one four, uh, and that crashed reading accessing eight, uh, which is perfect. Common path is now one four. Uh, ooh, that's going to re-exec. Yes, yes. Okay. If JIT entry adder dot is none. See? That's why we didn't change it. Because I knew we were going to have to do that. Uh, we got to change this up. Ooh, that one barely squeezed. Barely squeezed. Okay, so if we don't have a JIT entry address, now in this case we do need to set this to none. So the way this works is the JIT entry address will be the, uh, it'll be a re-entry point. So this is going to be the, we'll print JIT entry address is x JIT adder. Basically, the way this works is if we have nothing to do, if we don't know what we want to execute, which is the case for the very first time we execute, we will then resolve. Uh, so this is set up CMM uh, 31, which is perfect, because that always needs to be valid. In this case, we're going to find the most common path we want to execute. We'll splat that out. We'll re-update the online masks. 
and then we'll update this JIT entry address, and then here we'll take it. Otherwise, uh, there's a chance that this was set in a faulting situation. So basically here you saw an infinite loop where we kept uh, looping and doing the same thing over and over. We shouldn't have an infinite loop anymore. So this is more correct. It will fault and then it will re-execute the faulting instruction um, on the VMs that are still enabled. And then uh, broken pipe. Okay. So JIT entry address is this which is the same as the common path. We have a fault on 1.4, which is correct. We update the online mask, which is correct. We have a JIT entry address, which is not equal to the common path because this is going to be the address of the like memory instruction uh, that, we, that we issued. It'll go and re-execute that. Um, it then exited with a trap. Uh, yes, because all of those ended up branching indirect to one. Oh my god. Trap dead. Mask one. Um. Okay, I think this is now working. Uh, it's not 100% correct yet. How is that not crashing? Oh, we don't have a branch. I don't have a conditional branch. A conditional branch would crash catastrophically right now, which is fine. We'll worry about that later. Okay. So in this case, we only have a direct branch. Doesn't matter. Uh, and we have an indirect branch. So since we only have an indirect branch, that's all we need to worry about right now. So we need to update indirect branch to resolve these JIT addresses based on the PCs. Um, all of the things after calls will be filled in. All of the, uh, the entry point will be filled in as well. So that should be good. So basically what happened is we had some of them fault off, which was good. We then re-entered with an online mask E3, which is what we want. Uh, at that instruction, and then we ended up doing our branch indirect, and we ended up masking off VMs because it's probably really confused because we've changed uh, the behavior of ZMM31. So let's take a look at uh, anywhere that we use ZMM31. Uh, here we're filling it in with dead, which is fine. Uh, and then here, that's going to read from dead. We're not really using that yet. That's doing the aperm. Um, which is fine. That all of this logic stays the same. It's still a unique identifier. So we have to change bind. So bind now. Uh, we get the PC address. Get the resolve ILR PC address. Oh yeah, that's where we want to branch to. Uh, do a permute based on the VM that we're following. The following VM is computed. The following VM is computed down here every time. I'm pretty sure it's recomputed. Um, Isle regs 30 is recomputed every time, which is a perm, which is good. So this is going to perm the PC address that we're going to follow to ZMM0. Then we're going to get the branch target into RDX. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to int3 here. asm.int3. We're going in. We're going in. So this should fault. Should crash on a, a breakpoint. And then we'll go in and uh, check the register state. Looks great. Okay, so we'll SSH into Fileland uh, and divergent stress test. Perfect. GDB. Run it. X10 IPC. Yep. So we're about to do our branch indirect. Let's take a look at uh, um, IR. Uh, let's take a look at K1. That's our online mask. That looks good. E3. Uh, that has E3. What's that? Uh, Python. Oops. 
stream term python python bin e3 so we have this is the vm that is not starting in the right spot and these are the two that faulted this is the um four and this is the one so one four faulted that is the correct online mask let's take a look at zmm 31 and we're interested in the v8 in 64 is there a way to do this can i do this Is there a way I can destructure that in GDB? Any GDB people who understand how this works? Because I would really like to see just that. Anyways, uh, here we can see all of the target addresses where things want to execute. Uh, we see that, and is that correct? That's a perming the PC address into, okay. So we're gonna have into ZMM0, this is PC. So V8 int64, here's the PC that we want to execute um, for the VM we're following. And the PC address itself is gonna be X10I PC minus 16. I'm gonna have to take a guess. Uh, here we have ZMM30 is, that's the, that's the perm, ZMM29. ZMM29 contains the targets. So we have one that wants to go to one, one that go wants to go to two. This is based on A. So the A register's read one, two, three, six, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, uh, eight. That one's disabled. Zero, that's disabled. Um, is this one disabled? Oh, this is reading. What is this reading? ZMM 29. That is getting ZMM29. Yeah, that A perm, that's the PC address. ZMM29. One, two, eight was masked. Oh, this was masked, this was masked. Uh, then we have a six, seven, and eight. Perfect. So that's good. That has correctly filled those in. And then we have the following VM, which is index zero. So we're following index zero. That caused us to perm the one, which is the target address of VM zero into the same location on all eight slots, which we then can... So at this point, what I wanna do is I actually want to resolve the branch target um, so first I need to determine if they're different. So, and the way that I do that, I do that in the JIT, uh, uh, in the um, MMU JIT. So we have divergence, no divergence case. Uh, this is, what did I call it? Diverge. Label diverge, branch near. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna perm Q, uh, the A perm with a PC address into ZMM0, perfect, exactly the same. Uh, compare all the addresses with this one active, uh, with the f following VM. Compare all the addresses with the following VM to determine if they are the same. And this is gonna be based on, this should be using kmask. So we're gonna generate a new temp kmask based on which PC addresses are going to the same location. Then I'm gonna do this logic here. Oops. So what this is going to do this is going to do a uh, XOR of K1 and K2. So this is gonna find the differences between the K mask, the temp K mask and the K mask. And then this is, so basically K2 will be the, it'll be set for any bits that have been changed that are not equal. So this will give me the mask of, of changed VMs, of differing VMs. And then this is going to say if K2 is non-zero, then that means that one of them differed, in which case one of them took a different path, and we need to walk all of them in parallel. 
Um, so we're gonna give that, we're gonna name that block. Let's see, I think I have a format somewhere, probably. Here we go. Um, this is branch indirect. Can only be one branch indirect. So this is gonna be the, we're creating a unique label for diverge. Honestly, ah, we, yeah, we need a unique label. Uh, we're gonna call this block that diverge. This is gonna take the um yeah, what is this? Inst ID uh block block dot zero. So that's gonna create a string. That's gonna be a unique identifier for there. And then here, we're gonna branch to diverge, uh, which will whack down here, asm.label diverge, asm.int3. Um, so address was resolved, branch directly to it. So basically, this is gonna be the fast path if they're all branching to the same address, in which case we can do a scalar uh, walk. So this should still crash. Uh, Label that needs to be ref string, and I think that's it. Uh, this needs to have an empty list. Oops, empty slice. Okay, so this should basically be able to determine if we can go scalar and broadcast out, um, which is the fast path, and uh, it looks like we are faulting. So we can change this. I'm gonna change all of them to the same target temporarily. Um, and I'm gonna get rid of this PC change temporarily just so things are a little bit simpler. So there's not gonna be divergence. In this case, it's actually gonna try to execute, I think. Um, we can close this. What's it doing here? Uh, faulted zero, faulted one four, new mask eb re-entering, uh, inbound branch for k mask eb. Inbound branch. Where do I print that? Okay, so that's saying that a branch request exists because uh, this has not been lifted yet, which is true. So basically, if that hasn't been lifted yet then I'll break out into the into here. So basically what happened is uh, it ended up going down. So there was no divergence because they're all the same. And thus it ended up uh, going down this path where it extracted one entry and performed a scalar walk of the branch table. It then ended up seeing that this is not in the branch. Uh, the PC1 doesn't translate into a JIT address because it hasn't been lifted yet. Uh, since that was the case, that ended up jumping down here to lift request. That then um, uh, stored the PC addresses into ZMM0 with KMask and then returned out. And basically, as indicated, uh, with this return, when we see uh, branch, uh, the branch query, inbound branch KMask, this is saying that EB was online. So those were online. And then these uh, vectors were attempted to be, um, uh, these were the, the targets for these. Um, and then common path, uh, yes, so the common path is incorrect because we haven't updated anything. So this is gonna be basically the same code as up here. Um, all I need to do is I need to update, it's actually this code right here. Because in the case of a branch, uh, the PC values haven't been updated, or the um, there's no JIT re-enter address. Is there a way to like tab multiple in Vim? There has to be. Like when I have this selected, is there a way that I like, if I hit uh, right caret, it tabs in one. Can I do like two caret? Oh, you, f you just can do that. Literally just can do that, I'm so stupid. Press dot. Oh yeah, dot repeats the last thing, doesn't it? 
Dude, I don't know why that's something that, as a Vim user of 15 years, that is something that I've like never gotten the habit of doing. It's so frustrating. I guess I just don't force myself to do it, which is the problem. Okay. So in this case, I want to resolve all the target addresses for the VMs that requested a branch. So this is going to be different. I'm going to do for VM ID in uh, caused VM exit dot iter print VM ID needs a new PC and we'll do VM ID right here. Just now started using XJ and XK. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what is that? Okay, perfect. So, needs a new PC. Uh, these should be all the enabled VMs in EB. And if we look, EB should be uh, 0, 1. We skip 2, which is correct. 3, that is correct. And then 5, 6, 7 is, is E. Okay. That's working correctly. So that's going through all of the PCs that caused a branch exit. I am then going to not get the PC register. I'm going to, um, from targets, PC is targets.extractVMID. Then I'm going to lift PC, IL session, JIT address, replace for that VMID, the JIT address. Uh, update online mask. I don't actually need to do that because we're going to recompute online mask. Online mask will be recomputed for us on the next loop iteration. So we don't need to worry about that. Oops. Set text with 80. That is something that I've started uh, getting used to. Are you familiar with um, GQ? GQ is amazing. Yeah, check this shit out. So I have like this long ass comment. GQ on that line, or GQQ would work. Oh, reformats. Reformats. GQ. So like, if this were like a really long comment sort of thing, well, now it's gonna format it, but let's say like, I guess I changed something in here and it's like really unhappy. I guess that I did too much. Okay, so like this comment's fucked. Highlight it, visual mode, GQ. Psh, reformatted to 80 columns. Damn right. That's something I just started using and I love it. It's so good. Uh, online mass will be computed on the next loop iteration uh, based on the new ZMM31 value. Okay, so that is updated ZMM31 with those PCs, which is fantastic. Uh, prints old ZMM31 hexy, a uh, little hexy boy here. We'll do state self.state.il regs 31 and update it here. The value for that, is it different than com color? Yeah, it's text width or TW. Okay, so we ran all the VMs. We had an MMU fault, we masked off 14 because those were the two that caused access violations, which is good. We then continued execution. Uh, we then had a branch VM exit. We have an inbound branch with these targets with EB. This was the old targets, uh, 14, 14, dead, and dead, because we killed those, and 14 on all these. Requesting a lifting of one, because that's one of the lanes. Old ZMM31 vector, uh, 711. Oh, well, it's the new one now. So this ha now has the new addresses for the new block. It then goes to execute with online mask EB. Common path is 711. Computes a new online mask. JIT entry path is 711. Enters with EB. EB mask trap dead because uh, they all hit the trap. That worked. 
So, um, I think, I think this is now correct on the, um, yeah, this is definitely now correct on the Rust side of things, but we need to update the JIT side of things. So, in the case that there's no divergence, and they're going to the soft side where they have to resolve the branches, it's correct. So let's let's actually put this in. I'm going to put old and new in here. And then what I want to do is I want to... Um, do, 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 do. In this case, I'm going to change one of them. This will become two. So there will be divergence now. Please, 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 please. It should go back and re-execute. Uh, oh, divergence. That makes sense. Since there's divergence, it was really unhappy about that. Um, and that faulted here. So in this case, if there's no divergence, it will report the online mask. Uh, let's see. Oh, in this case, we don't need to update kmask because it hasn't changed. So in this case, everything is doing the same thing. So when we get to the, this point... At this point, we know that all online VMs are going to branch to the same location. Only have to perform a scalar walk. No online updates needed. So here we're gonna branch. We're gonna extract the branch targets uh, from ZMM zero. We're then going to. Uh, Walk that table. This is going to uh, walk the branch table. Uh, if any of them fail, it's going to perform a lift request, which will go up. That means the online mask will get reported. It will have the correct VMs for all of them, which will be great. Uh, so it will fill those in. It'll lift them. If they already exist, it'll fill in the JIT addresses for them. And then we're going to... We don't actually jump this lift request returns out. If we did succeed, we were able to successfully translate the PC of the VMs that are online into a JIT address, and thus we are branching uh, to that location. We don't actually have to update ZMM31 in this case um, because we're not going to leave behind any VMs, right? We don't have to update ZMM31 unless we're updating the online mask. And in this case, um, we're not updating the online mask. Or, or we're not disabling a VM without setting a faulting VM is the most specific case that it needs to be. So at this point, I'm hitting diverge, which is here. So I need to perform a, a parallel page table walk. So this is going to... Um, yeah, so I need to walk this uh, table in parallel. And this is a, a little bit more difficult. This is kind of what I was planning on putting off as long as I could, and I think I, I'm trying to think of things that I can do to procrastinate, but I'm pretty sure I have to do it at this point, so I might not have an option here. Son of a bitch. So here's one thing I can test. Um, I can procrastinate a little bit. We're going to have them all branch to the same location, but we're going to have this VM want to branch there directly right away which means that this will actually get lifted and there will be a, a hot path to that location. Actually, I might want to update ZMM31. I think I do. If I update ZMM31, then I can bring that VM online. Let's check this out. Yeah, look at this. So the way that this happened, oh, that's fucking beautiful. It's exactly what I expected. So entering VM with F7 because uh, we disabled one VM. We disable two more VMs due to a fault. Uh, we then enter. Uh, we then enter with E3. We then get a trap on all of those. Uh, that didn't have to resolve those branches because they were in the branch table, and that took the easy path that we have implemented. And then, uh, faulted is now F7. The common path is B, which is the the. Uh, index 1, the online mask is 1000, which is this. We then go to JIT and enter that, and we execute it, and we successfully execute that until death, which is the same location. Now, 
I actually want to add remerging. So what you saw here is that this ended up doing a branch indirect to the PC, to the JIT address corresponding to PC1, uh, which is where this one wants to execute. And this ended up taking only the online VMs along with it. It didn't actually re-enable a VM. So what I want to do is I want to actually perform the, the broadcast here. I, I do want to broadcast uh, broadcast or update ZMM31 with the uh, branch target such that we can bring VMs online. So, what do we have? We got PC address in ZMM0. Apram Q, that's looking for divergence. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I think I want to reuse some code here. So, VPRM Q, that's looking to see if there is. Uh, divergence in these registers. If there's not, then we can perform a lookup. We can query it, and then we can do this. asm.vp <laughs> broadcast q into vreg zmm31 uh, kmask and we're gonna broadcast shit. I don't know if this is valid, but I hope it is. Racks. In a sense. So that's going to update, since all of them are going to this location, it's going to update ZMM31 with the value in racks, which is the target address. I don't know if that's a valid instruction. Let me check here. VP broadcast quadward ZMM31 with a mask of racks. Please, 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 please. Yes! Okay. Hopefully my assembler supports that. <laughs> So we're going to broadcast the JIT address that these want to branch to uh, into ZMM31, and then we're not actually going to branch there. We're going to go to um, asm.perform. Uh, this is going to be label. Uh, perform branch. Uh, perf branch. Perf br. Perform branch. Label perf br. This is going to do a jump to branch short, actually near perf bf. Address was, uh, zmm31 has been updated. Jump to the branch location that will update online mask. Update the online mask. Dude, we're going to get calls to get merged back in. If two things end up branching to, like, memcopy, we'll actually bring things back online. Dude, I'm stoked. Beautiful. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. It's what I feared. It's what I feared the most. My assembler doesn't support it. Son of a bitch. What other instructions have that shape? Oh no, what have I done? I mean, we're still gonna do it. We can hard code it if we need to. Ah, uh, evex, evex, nds. Okay, let's see what encodings we got. Ooh, evex memreg, vm64z, not quite what we want, vm64z, um, evex memreg, can it broadcast to memory? Let's take a look. VP broadcast Q Intel. 
Come on, Felix. Hook me up. Uh, VP broadcast Q. No. Um, actually, we can use reg mem. Oh, yeah, but that's not taking, uh, I see. Uh, evex index. What is this? Into a ZMM from a VM64Z? What the fuck is a VM64Z? Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's for, um, gathers, scatter gathers. Son of a bitch. Oh, I don't have that encoding support and I don't want to write it, so we're going to hard code it because it's, uh, we can, we can do that. <laughs> Son of a bitch. As a mount dot raw. Then one of this then and B raw raw bytes. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're going to broadcast quadward team M31 with racks using the K1 mask. Oh, uh, we got to get rid of this. Okay. So ZMM31 is updated. Jump unconditionally to perf BF, which is good. And then this we're just going to uh, asm.ud2. I don't know if I have ud2. I don't. Okay. So, that's going to update ZMM31. At that point, ZMM31 should now contain the branch targets for everything. Looks so compl- Yeah, it's, it's fucking a little- It's a little rough. <laughs> it's, you know, sometimes- Sometimes I like to be humble. In this case, not so much. It's a little bit rough. Uh, GDB divergence run x10 ipc minus 10 we're on the right in three we're about to do this which is wrong but that's fine now here's where we check ir zmm 31 we got two debtors and we have all the others the same that looks good i think that is correct we should have ir racks Yep, that's 15. So we ended up filling in those except for um, this slot, this third slot, which is what it was before, which is awesome because we can now bring that online. So now what we're going to do is update. Um, let's see. So in that case, I'm just going to actually make sure that racks contains... Um, at this point, ZMM must be updated for the branch targets for all lanes, um, that are online. Uh, racks must contain the branch targets. Okay, because we're going to branch to racks. And then here, I'm going to do asm dot. Um, this. ZMM0, we need to make sure we don't clobber it. Uh, ZMM0 uh, must contain the PC adder broadcast to all, um, to all lanes. Unconditional lanes. Which it should be from above. Uh... No K mass, so that broadcast to all. So shy, see you at midnight. Actually, that's not correct. Uh, we do have to recompute this. Nice. So racks. Racks. Um. I think we'll just recompute that. 
At this point, ZMM31 must be updated to the branch targets for all lane that are online. That is true. That is the point of the initial stage. Then at this stage, uh, and that's it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do the broadcast from here. This is going to determine the address. Determine the JIT address. So this is going to be VREG ZMM31. Determine the JIT address or uh, broadcast the following JIT address to all lanes. Fuck. I, I went to... Wow. I, I don't know how I fucking hit a Q in there. Oh, well, Folk Alasaur. <laughs> Sirs. I'll graph JIT. Now it's up here. Okay, uh, permute ZMM31 based on APERM to all into ZMM0. Uh, broadcast the following JIT address into all lanes. Uh, re compute the uh, online K mask based on uh, addresses which are pending for the same. Git address. So here we're going to do a uh, compare equal of no K mask ZMM31 to VREG ZMM0. So this is doing, this is saying for all of the VMs that are going to go to the same location that the following VM is going to go to, uh, set K mask. And we use no K mask here. That allows VMs to come online. And then we can do an asm, we gotta extract, uh, get the branch target into RDX, I'm fine with that. And then we're gonna do an asm.jump, reg RDX, jump to the indirect target. <laughs> oh, is it gonna work? We come here, perf bf, ZMM31 is updated, we figure out which one we're following, we then broadcast that to all lanes, we figure out if anyone wants to come online with us for the ride, we extract out the element uh, that we're going to use for the branch target from ZMM0, which is correct, and then we branch to it. This should work, uh, and this one won't cause a breakpoint. This should execute, and it should bring all the VMs online. So this VM that we set to execute from a different point from the start, it'll actually recognize that that's executing the same location as the other VMs and bring those online. Let's see what we got. Uh, we start executing with everything online. We then figure out the common path is this. We then mask off the one that is not going down the common path because all of them are executing PC leet except for this one which is executing PC1. So we mask that off. We then go execute. Uh, we're executing these instructions here. We figure out that there's a fault uh, accessing address 8. We then mask off those VMs uh, and mark those as faulted. We then have the JIT entry address, which is the same from the fault. We continue executing with E3. We then end up with an exit of EB. Look at that. We entered the VM with a mask of E3. And we exited with a trap on EB because we ended up picking up that last bit. We set bit uh, bit 3, which made E3 become EB because we picked up that that was going to a location that we are branching to with this indirect branch. And we brought that shit back online and we executed all of that in parallel. And we finished the case with only uh, one trap instead of two traps and a re-entry. Uh, fucking beautiful. Perfect. So that now works. Uh, now I just need to implement the parallel walk. God damn it, I've wanted to... I, I've put it off as long as I can. Son of a bitch. Ah, we have to do it. So in this case, we're still gonna... We're still gonna fail catastrophically. I'm gonna set this to two. That's gonna cause a divergence. We're gonna have to translate those addresses in parallel. Um, 
and then the transa- uh, the translation is ultimately going to fail, uh, obviously, and we need to now, uh, fuck, oh, now I got to do scatter gathers, son of a bitch, man, scatter gathers are the bane of my existence, um, okay, so that is in this divergent case, um, at this point, we need to uh, update ZMM31 for all of the VMs which are online. Uh, there are differing indirect direct branch targets, and thus we must walk the branch table in parallel. I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, it might, it might be tough to bring you up to speed, uh, but basically we are looking up in a table, we're converting a guest address into a JIT address based on a table. We already implemented it up here, but in this case we actually have VMs that are looking up different addresses in the table. So I'm actually going to look up those addresses in parallel by using scatter gather instructions that let me access multiple addresses in one instruction. Uh, yeah, it's a bit rough. Um, fuck. Okay. So let me look up my scatter gather in text, uh, syntax. Uh, for my assembly, my assembler, I don't remember what I used. It's probably pretty straightforward and obvious when I see it. Uh, gather QQ. That looks pretty good. So at this point, uh, we actually have a base address. Check this out. <laughs> so this is going to... Fuck. So that's going to get into racks. So the PC table that I currently have is a four-level page table. Um, we're going to have to mask off all the bits that are present in ZMM and PC address. Um, I don't think we can re-execute this instruction, so I think I can modify PC adder in place. No, I definitely can't. I have to make a copy. So first we're going to make a copy of PC address, asm dot vectored move double quad, uh, move double quad word aligned into vreg zmm0 kmask from vreg zmm, uh, this is actually the PC adder, uh, make a copy of the PC address. Okay, so we're going to implement this logic up here. So we did a DRF into racks, which is the, the page table walk. Um, and I think I'm going to have to do that. So I'm going to have to broadcast RBP into a ZMM that's going to perform the page table walk. Are we using ZMM0 down here? No, we recompute ZMM0. Uh, this actually has no dependencies on anything. Cool. So that means all of our scratch registers are available for use. Oh my god, dude, this stuff is brutal. Make a copy of the PC address. Then, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to implement this logic, but in parallel. So we have to broadcast out RBP to all lanes. And then, yeah, that doesn't add racks RBX. We're going to have to actually perform that add. Yep. But we have a, we've got a bunch of temporaries. Um, so we have to broadcast out the base. Actually, we can do the first level lookup using RBP as a base. Holy shit. Oh my god, why do I do this? Alright, so the PC address. We're gonna asm.v vector packed 
roll quad word. Uh, that's going to shift up the top bit. So we're going to shift ZMM0, K mask. Uh, and we're going to rotate it left. Uh, VREG ZMM0 is going to get rotated by immediate 16. I think I added these encodings. Uh, roll. Like here I have VP roll VQ. But I think I have v VP roll now in my assembler. Let me check. Uh, VP SLLQ. So I have that, which is an EVEX regmem M8. And I think VP roll Q. Oh, maybe they only, oh, VP roll D. AVX 512, uh, VP roll Q, ZMM1, this is a, uh, that, yeah, that's the same format, I'm pretty sure that's the same format as vector packed SLLD, VP SLLQ, is this the same format, uh, ZMM K1Z, ZMM2 broadcast M8. Okay, so we can actually add an encoding uh, for roll and soul. So we're going to do that. We'll copy these. The same encodings as these. This will be uh, roll quad word. And this will be roar quad word. Rotate left and F66. Uh, OF66. W1, and this is a 7.3, is the byte. Uh, ooh, and then it's a slash 6, so a ZMM6. Wait. What? What? Uh... How do these differ? Oh, was I looking at the wrong one? Yeah, it's, this is 7-2. Holy shit. Uh, OF-66. OF-66, and then this is a 7-2 for rotate left. Let me double check. Rotate left quadward is indeed a 7-2 W1. So rotate right quadward. This is a 7-2... Slash zero. Oh, is the other a slash? Slash one. So that was a slash one. This was a slash zero. This is also a seven two. And that's roar Q. And then we can do, uh, uh, stream term CD folk asm, oh, CD soft serve folk asm. Cargo test release. This will run all the tests. It'll have regenerated a test for that instruction encoding. So we'll just let that run. That might kind of script the stream a little bit because that's going to peg my CPU. Um, blend. Uh, rotate right quad word. Rotate... Left quadward. Okay, they pass. So we correctly implemented those instructions, which now means we can do roll quadward M16. I should also update these shift sums to not use CSBCs. We're going to do that. I'm going to make a note of that. God, son of a bitch, man. Uh, JIT entry add us wrong if all failed. Okay. I'm going to make a note for update... A constant shifts and rotates to not use variable shifts on constants in the 
M M U. Woo! How do y'all guys keep track of your notes of like shit you need to do? On my offline network, I actually have a I have a GitHub, but I don't maintain this stuff on GitHub because uh, I don't want it to be public. So on my offline network, I actually have all this code and I have all my notes and I make Git issues and I have trackers and because I run a basically like a a GitHub offline. Um, but I don't I don't push any of this to repos here. Anyways, so we're gonna do oh god, I keep trying to put this off. Uh, we're gonna do a vector packed rotate left quadrant of 16 of ZMM0, which is the PC address, which is RDX. In this case, that is the PC address. Then we're gonna do an asm dot uh so I want to make a copy of that so I can mask it off. Um so I can actually do this, uh, VP and quadward, VREG, ZMM1, KMask, VREG, ZMM0, uh, of CS, constant storage. Uh, this actually needs to be a CSBC, in this case, of FFFF. <laughs> so, basically... What this is doing, this broadcast or this makes a copy of the PC address, um, which I don't actually need to do because because I have a different destination here. So, PC address rotate to the left by 16 into ZMM0. That'll get the top 16 bits and the bottom 16 bits. I then mask these by doing an AND of FFFF. Uh, with ZMM1, or ZMM0 and FFFF, that'll get, basically that's getting the top 16 bits of the PC address and putting them into ZMM1, um, but only those bits. Uh, then I want to do a lookup in the table. So here's where we get fucking crazy. Uh, we're going to do an asm.vp gather QQ into VREG ZMM1. ZMM1 is fine. We don't need it again. We're going to use KMask. And then here we're going to do a MV IDX <laughs> with a sum with a base of RPP uh, with a god damn I love this shit man with a tuple and this is going to be using a ZMM1 base with a one scalar with a zero offset. And that's going to perform up to eight memory accesses in parallel. Uh, yeah. So that's going to perform eight memory accesses in parallel at RBP plus ZMM1 as eight different offsets. And then it's going to load them into ZMM1. In theory. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally what that's going to do. We're going to put an int 3 there, and we're going to verify that that's doing what we want. Uh, MVA index is not in the scope. Yeah. Um, we'll just do this. I fucking love this shit, man. You, uh, you just can't get much better than this, man. Uh, 687... Uh, 867, no CSBC, yeah, we'll just grab it from here, CSBC, uh, CS space, paste it here, it's the same thing as the thing above, it adds it to the content storage database, but it creates a membc operand instead, uh, which I also don't have, uh, now I do. Okay, so this should now work for that for that first level page table, and uh, we're doing a one and a two. This is actually gonna this will actually probably succeed for the first few levels, so we should be fine for a while. Um, we're gonna do a stream term, shift that over. We're gonna SSH into Phyland. Uh We're gonna GDB dive. 
convergent stress test, and we're gonna run it. And we're gonna be right. Garen fucking tee it. So, oh, we got a sigil. Oh boy. Oh, son of a bitch. Um. V-Reg, ZMM1, K-Mask, Temp K-Mask, None, Zero, some RBP, ZMM1, maybe I don't, uh, let's see what I, let's see what my dumbass assembler tried to emit, uh, PC minus 10, uh, 16, VP gather quadward ZMM1 K1 from RBP plus ZMM1 times one plus zero. Oh my god, I don't think you can do. I mean, I omit it and this disassembled it, but I actually think that's an invalid instruction. Uh, I don't think you can encode uh, RBP as a base. Sib. Uh, VM64X. Let's look at Sandpile. Like, you see that, that GDB did disassemble this exactly as I want it. A gather with K1 of RBP Z1, uh, ZMM1. Oh, you know what? You might not be able to have the same destination. Is that the restriction? Oh, I think that's the restriction. Um. Uh. If the memory operand is encoded without the SIB byte, yeah, no shit. If any pair of the index, mask, or destination registers are the same, ooh, you got a UD. <laughs> ZMM2. Bye bye. Problem solved. Yeah, I haven't done gathers in a while. RBP is valid. Okay. Okay. So it's just, yeah, I can't output to the same. Dude, I need to look into how that's implemented in microcode because you know they're doing some wacky shit. I bet they're updating that. I mean, they do actually update that register, uh, register uh, in intermediate steps. Okay. So we just did uh, and, and we did a VP gather QQ. It didn't fault, which is really good. Uh, X and I PC, X and I, uh, or I R ZMM1. In this case, it should be the same for all of them. It should just be zeros. Uh, Zero, 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 zero. These two are masked off, so we don't care. So that is correct. Um, so this should have done... ZMM2 should contain the exact same value uh, in, in the active VMs, which are only these few. It should contain the exact same memory as X10XG, the giant memory at RBP plus zero. We'll just do one, and it does. It fucking does. Uh, it was able to look all of those up um, correctly. Okay, so, so far it's correct. <sighs> all right. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, D ref the first 16 bits in, in the table. Now we can't use uh, RBP anymore because we have to use the address that's in ZMM2. So we're gonna rotate VREG ZMM0. We're gonna continue rotating ZMM0 by another 16 bits. We're gonna AND it again. And then we're gonna do... I don't think you can do a ZMM base. I'm pretty sure you can't. You can only do indices for VSIB. Uh, let's take a look at mod RM. That's going to go here. That's going to go to SIB. And then that's going to have... Uh, yeah. Plus base. 
base isn't a, an offset, yeah, so you can't encode that. So I'll need to actually make an add here. So here I'll do asm.vpadd quadward vreg zmm1 kmask vreg zmm1 with vreg zmm2. Um, and then that one we multiplied by eight. Oh, actually this was wrong. Can I do a multiply by eight here? I think eight overloads to register size. Uh, let's see what, what encodings are valid. Uh, with my SIBI times eight in these cases, those MMs times eight, uh, three. Uh, if motto int base, oh, is that for rip rel? No, one, two, that's if we have RBP. Is it plus S byte. Oh, that's applying an offset to the, no, it's still multiplied by eight. It's, it's a 64, uh, multiplier on the base, but not a, 64 multiplier, it's still an 8 multiplier on there, which is good. That needs to be a multiply by 8. That needs to be a multiply by 8. So in this case, we're going to do a VP gather DD of none. We have no base. We're going to deref ZMM1, which is a... Uh, ooh. Oh, then I'm going to need to... I actually need to multiply that by eight. So this one's fine. We shift by 16. We and off. We gather. We gather QQ. Um, we multiply it by eight here, which is correct. Then in this case, I'm actually going to shift it uh, I think I'm just gonna ro I'm gonna over rotate it I think so I want to do uh, two to the three is eight right so I want to rotate by sixteen plus three I want to rotate by nineteen and then I want to have and <laughs> I want to and with uh, shift three. Um, and now that's a multiplied by eight address. I'm then going to add, we're going to, I'm just going to write it this way. It's the exact same effect, but I'm going to add that offset into ZMM2, which is the address for the next level of the table. And then we're going to deref ZMM1 into ZMM2. I think that's correct. In fact, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to over-rotate the first one, and then this one we can do this. Uh, that's still uh, masking by that. Pretty sure. And then everything's just a, a one. RBP ZMM1, that has the offset, and then in this case we have an extra step. We're adding the base from ZMM2 uh, into ZMM1. Looks fucking good. We do this three times, and we're done. Except now we need to check if we got zero from any of them. <laughs> so we're, we're, we still have a, a couple more things to do here. But yeah, we do that three times to look up the final bits. This, this is the only special case because we're doing an RBP. The rest of them are just doing ZMM1. Uh, it's just a little bit faster. Okay, we got a SIG trap. And we should have translated... At this point, um, IR ZMM0, that makes sense. This one shouldn't fault, but it should be uh, incorrect. ZMM, we loaded into ZMM2. So ZMM2, we have a D0, uh, which should be, let's take a look here, lifted D0. 
Ooh. Ah, uh, that looks wrong. Where's my int three at? Let's see. We have zeros. If we rotate it left by 19, we have an and with, uh, I'm actually gonna write this as 16 plus three, so it's a little bit more clear. Uh, multiply that by eight, right? Shifting by three is correct. Yeah, that'll multiply by eight. That shifted over, and that into there. Do a lookup into RBP. Uh, get the address for ZMM2. That'll be a zero lookup. Then we have a rotate left of ZMM0, which is the PC address, which we don't clobber. We then and ZMM0 to get a new ZMM1. Based on that, we add that to ZMM2, which was the previous lookup from the table into ZMM1. We then, that result we put in ZMM1. We then do a gather. I'm pretty sure this is correct. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, I think RAX or RDX. Oh, divergence already occurred, okay. So ZMM, uh, PC address, ZMM2, X10, I, PC minus 32, minus 64, 70, X20I, shit. Thirty I hundred. Uh that's not the first one yet. One twenty eight. I just need to find the right alignment. Uh is that it? Is that right? Rotate by Yeah, there's our there's our branch. Okay, there's our rotate, yeah, okay. So vector pack rotate left ZMM29. So ZMM29 uh, PC adder. So let's take a look at PC adder. IR ZMM29. So 1, 2, 8, 0, 8, 1, 1, 1, 1. Yeah, so we only care about the ones that are actively masked, which is K1. Uh, whoa. 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 Oh my god. Dude, VP Gather. Oh, VP Gather updates the K mask. Oh. Oh, K mask. Yeah, the mask operand, the third operand, specifies the conditional load operand of all of those, uh, conditionally specified by that. Uh, if it's not set, it's left unchanged. Um. The entire mass register will be set to zero if, uh, by this instruction unless it causes an exception. Um, so if an exception occurs, there's actually a partial completion of the loads and it updates that mask. Um, so if you'll see right before here, I have a move K2, K1 before every gather operation I do. So I need that. Uh, and then I can do temp K temp k mask this is now correct yeah so it'll make a copy of the k mask and use that for gathers and then uh those will, those bits will get cleared um if they are read such that an exception will not reread those values uh and we got a sig trap looks good uh and we should have IR K0, or K1 should be E3, K2 should be 0, X uh, IR, IR ZMM2 should be the, uh, the translated addresses, uh, AB, 0, 0, 0, 0, AB, 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 uh, and that should line up with 31. Uh, here's AB, 
from the lane that we set, and that's correct. So that correctly did the walk. How is Temp KMAS getting set? Uh, it's just constants that I, I always have set up in in my JIT, but they're set up here. It's a, it's a merge K2 register. I love how I made a copy of that. Fucking dumbass. All right. Okay, so that did a walk in parallel, which was fucking great. Um, now, one of those won't resolve. Uh, in fact, let's. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We can now merge these in of what we think they are. Now we can do an asm dot vmove dqa. I mean, honestly, we could special case the last one. Shit. Dude, I, I, I have to because it saves an instruction. I, I, I'm sorry. If ii is equal to 2, or if ii is less than 2, else final loop iter merge directly into ZMM31. Hell yeah. So that'll update ZMM31. And one of those is going to be zero, I guarantee it. But yeah. So that saves an instruction at the end of every branch. Yep. Only on the slow path, but whatever. X10 uh, IPC looks good. We're where we want to be. I R ZMM31. That has now been updated. We have a a, B, a zero, and the zero is set for the one branching to two because two was not resolved. We have dead. We have A, B, dead, A, B, A, B, A, B. Perfect. Now we just have to add checks for nulls. Um, I'm pretty sure this lookup is correct, but I want to do... So my... Um, here's how we can really throw it off. Uh... This this lifter right now, if the PC is not equal to this, it'll return a trap with dead. So I'm actually going to smash in a, an F here. Uh, I'm going to set one of these targets to be not zero, all Fs, which will stress uh, derefing different areas in the tables, and it's going to make sure that my shifts and multiplies and things are correct. This should crash because this is going to this is going to deref null because there's going to be a branch table entry that's completely missing and there we go we got a sig sev um fucking beautiful god damn right all right so this is because after every gather i now need to check if any of these ended up being zero um oh, how do i compare with zero man uh Uh, I can do a test. We're going to do a, I think this will do, uh, an or test. So, we're going to need something like this. Uh, this is not going to go to diverge. This is going to go to lift request. So K2, K2, we're going to need to generate a K2. Asm dot uh, V, P, test, Q. ZMM2, K mask, V reg ZMM2, V reg ZMM2. Uh, check if any of the, I think that'll set VP test Q, oh, MQ. Is that what I want? Uh, yeah, I think that's VP test mass quad word. Uh, bitwise and of the pack quad word integers. Uh, and set k mass to k2 to revec the zero non zero under right mass k1. So we're going to write into 
temp K mask, which is K2. We're going to uh, do a test of ZMM2 and ZMM2. That'll update the corresponding, this is MQ. Um, that'll update the corresponding bits if there's zero. So if, if, you're to, if any of those are zero, then this bit will be set, which then means this or test uh, will then be, check if any of the lanes are zero. And this is k or test k2 k2. Test MQ, k mass and attempt k mass, zmm2, zmm2. That'll test itself. If it's uh, if there's zero, the bits will get set in temp k mask. This is then going to set the zero flag. It will be non-zero if any bits are set. We want no bits to be set because we want them to all to be non-zero. <laughs> so this will um, end up crashing in a, a different location because we don't do this on all the stages. Actually, that immediately failed, and it actually made it work, I think. Um, yeah, there we did. There we saw it. We saw... Um, what do we get? All right, let's take a look. We entered the VM. We had our fault accessing that. We went to re-enter. We re-execute the faults. We ended up getting a branch. We got a branch. It was divergent, but it realized that this branch has not been lifted yet. Inbound branch. We lift that. We, though, we then go re-enter. Uh, we then... Blah, blah, blah. We have faulted again, which is a problem because we... Yeah, we got some issues still. Uh, really? Requesting a lifting of that. That's the new vector. BB E9. That's a different one. All the others are BB, which is good. This is the only one that differs. Online mask this, a faulted 14. Common path is BB. Online mask computed to be this because we mask off that one. We then go JIT enter with E9. Uh, we then dead out with E9. We return out. We have an online mask of zero. Faulted FD. Common path is E9. Online mask computed to be one zero, which is this bit. Uh, then we go to re-enter and we re-execute and we hit our trap and we, we're done. Uh, so that worked. So then, um, the next issue is at the different levels in the page table, but this logic is, is correct. So check if any of the lanes are zero. Um, oops. Fuck yeah. Uh, two, oops. Hey, I use dot. Dot just repeats the last command, doesn't it? So gather. Here we're going to check uh, ZMM2, ZMM2, KMask. Here I'm going to see uh, we're going to gather into 31. So we have to update this to then check for any zeros in KMask of that. If non-zero, branch near lift request. So that will now check at every level. After every deref, we're going to check if we have a zero. Uh, that should be good. And then, jumped on zero lift request. Uh, int 3, we're going to get rid of that. That's perf bf. We can fall through here. That's going to extract the correct address, and that should work. Um, this should no longer, or this is going to behave the same as before. It's still going to be correct. Uh, we're going to force it to succeed by setting some of these different VMs. So we're going to set, uh, we're going to set lane 5. Actually, we're going to set lane 7 to not 0. That's going to cause everything to get lifted right away. Let's see. Faulted. We got a branch. Request E3. We then recompute. Common path is EA. We mask off that one. Okay, let's go. So that one wasn't stressing us actually doing the lookup in the JIT. So now we translate leet1 and f. 
Uh, we enter in with a, a mask. We execute everything. We fall off 14. Uh, oh. Fault off with 14. Jit entry. Uh, executing with 6 3. Oh, yeah, because we have a couple more masked off. I think that's correct. Uh, it should be. It should be. Um, Python. Uh, hex. OB. Uh, can you do this? Can you do B? Yeah, you can in Python. Okay. So. First one succeeds. Second one succeeds. Third one faults. Uh, this one is not masked because it has a different PC target. This one faults. This one's on. This one's on. This one's off. C6. Uh, and then I just need to type it the other way. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 6.3. There you go. So we entered VM with 6.3. We uh, ended up exiting with a branch. Why? Why? Inbound branch came ask. Old ZMM, 31. It's 14.14. 14. 14. 1414 dead, EA, EA, 18. Why would that be exiting out? That translation shouldn't fail. It should succeed for all paths. Entering VM with 6.3, uh, we should be able to translate all of those in one go. So we do have a bug here. Let's see. Temp K mask, K mask. Jump non-zero, lift requests non-zero. That's based on two, ZMM2, ZMM31 merged in there. We're using K-mask, K-or test. I'm kind of confused. I think the lookup is failing on the Fs. Um, so that's doing a branch. Yeah, that, that should be able to handle that branch in the JIT. When I see branch here, it means it's a, uh, something is unresolved and needs to be lifted. We can actually see that nothing gets lifted here because we don't see a requesting a lifting of print. And that means that we're actually not doing this correctly. So for some reason, this is not resolving that address. And I'm kind of surprised. Uh, rotate left into ZMM0. ZMM0, ZMM1 is fine. We can clobber that. Temp K mask. K or test. If any of the bits are set, check if any of them are zero. All right, let's take a look. We're just going to step through and see what we get. Son of a bitch. 16, rotate left by 16. And with that, add ZMM1, the address. Yeah, let's check this out. Here we go. We're entering VM with 6.3, IR K0, or K1, should be 6.3, it is, looks glorious. Uh, we're going to do a rotate left of ZMM29. ZMM29 should contain 1F, 8's uh, not used, 0's not used, 8's not used, uh, 1, 1, and a 0. Is that masked off? Yes. That is, because we set that to, yeah, that one's set to Fs. So that's fine. Yeah, these are the target PCs. One, F. Uh, that one's clobbered. That one faulted. That one's good. That one's that, and then that one's clobbered as well. So that one looks good. We have the right indices. 
uh, X10 IPC. We're about to rotate left ZMM29 by 13. So that's going to shift it. That's going to shift over the top bits and also multiply it by 8. We're going to and quadward and quadward ZMM1 uh, with that 1 to 8. So we're going to step instruction, step instruction, uh, display IPC. There we go. Uh, so we're at our K move. We're going to step another instruction. X10. Uh, now we're at our gather. ZMM1 contains a. Um, 0, 7, F8, which is good. A 0, a 0, a 0, a 0. Uh, those look fantastic. It's going to do a gather at RBP. So let's take a look at uh, X10XG at RBP plus 0. That should be valid. And then RBP plus uh, OX, uh, what was... 7, F, 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 8. That's valid as well. Um, and those addresses are close enough that I'm, yep, I'm pretty sure that is the table that is correct. So we should gather, and we should get uh, 4, 5, 60, and 5, C, 10. So we're going to do step instruction. We did a gather into ZMM2. Oops. ZMM2, we have a uh, 4560, which is correct. We have a 5C10, which is correct. Uh, 4560, 4560, and a 0. That is correct. We only have, uh, what's our K mask? 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 bits. We got four things that showed up, and they're correct. Okay, let's see what we get. Um... So this is going to test to see if any of them are zero based on K1. Oh! Yep, that's wrong. This is actually going to have... This is going to be checking the masked off bits. Check this out. IR, K2, this is fucked. Yeah. Um. Oh, those are the non-zero bits. Or test, I think, sets if they're non-zero. Uh, VP or test. Oops, that's K or test. K or test W. Let's take a look. Uh, bitwise or updates ZF and CF. So it doesn't or and it updates... ZF. Uh, holy shit. I just got some crazy good news. Wow. Wow. Shit. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to check something quick. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. So I, I don't know if you guys know, but I play, I play uh, a game called RetroCores, which is a, a Tibia server, and I work my ass off to get the high scores on my skills. I train like basically most of the hours of the day that I'm at my computer, not training right now because I haven't been paying too much attention, but uh, this is club fighting, someone has 91 club fighting. Someone has 98 sword fighting gladiator. He's actually a really chill dude. And then uh, I have 98 axe. 
and there was someone who had 99 acts, and I was convinced that person was botting, so I made a website uh, that logs all of the online time for different players. So someone had 99, and I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with them, and that's why I haven't been training, because I gave up on it. Um, let's see. Was there another 98? Oh, Felix. Yeah, this guy is, hasn't logged in, so doesn't matter. I'm not worried about him. So there wa there's Arana, which is me, my character, and we can see my on online times. This is, like, the hours I'm online each day. And basically, I'm on, like, 10 or so hours a day, which is basically the amount of time that I'm at my computer. I haven't been playing this past day at all or today at all. Anyways, that shows kind of my online time. So the other guy who was beating me in skills surpassed me so fucking fast, and he was playing like 16 hours a day, which I thought was legit. And then, all of the sudden, this is when I made the website. I noticed that he was online every single time I logged in, and my sleep schedule varies a lot. So if someone is online, every time I log in, they're probably online all the time. So I made this website. I don't have the data for like the two days before here that I was looking into. Um, but anyways, I made this website literally because of this dude. And then I saw this. This was, this was, I had the website private. I implemented this data logging and I didn't tell anyone about it. I think it was actually like the first four days. And then I told people that I had this website and I made it public. And his time dropped from playing 24 hours a day to playing 16 hours a day. And then I noticed that all of the sudden, he had, he was on a fucking, uh, like, 48-hour online streak. And this game will kick you unless you make an action every 15 minutes. You are required to make an action every 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So that means that this dude... Audio's going weird? I don't, sorry, I don't know if it is. Um, so that means that this dude uh, was online straight for the past 48 hours, interacting with his character every 15 minutes. Yeah, go fuck yourself. I'm sorry, man. You're botting. <laughs> like, you're totally botting. And I made this website, I tried to gather and collect evidence and prove that this dude was botting, and just today, he got deleted. Just fucking got deleted. He was 99 skills, my goal was to be the first person to get 100 in all skills, to put into perspective how much time this is, this is about 850 hours into this character skilling. Now, it's relatively easy because I can just go AFK and I can have it on another screen. And, like, right now I'm not training, but even when I'm streaming, I can just have it up on another screen. And I can visibly see if, like, another player walks by. And after doing it for so fucking long, you just kind of get used to checking in every, like, 8 to 10 minutes. And if you get kicked every once in a while because you missed the 15-minute window, who cares? It's not a big deal. Like, log back in. You don't lose that much time. Um... So, yeah, so basically news came in that he just got deleted, which basically means I now can get first to 100 relatively reasonably. I'm like, I'm probably about a, 110 hours away, but I can do 110 hours in two weeks or so, because I can, now I have motivation to fucking train again. <laughs> so I'll probably start training again and, uh, See if I can get 100 first. So there is a war going on, so it is a little bit difficult for me to train. But anyways, that's the good news that just came in. Okay. So the issue here is or test. VP test MQ. That sets it. Does that set it if it's zero? Uh, or test sets the ZF flag if both sources are zero. What? Both sources. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have this somewhere else. Uh, VP or... VP test MQ. What was that diagram? 
Uh, this was from the first part of the stream. We had like a four hour first session of the stream where I was talking through the, um, uh, we were talking through the, um, problem that we were having and kind of talking about how we would go about solving this problem. And now this second half of the stream, I'll put the both halves up on YouTube. So I'll name the first one, like talking through the problem and this one, like fixing the problem. So we're really close. I want to finish this up. Dude, I'm so stoked. Holy shit. That was good news. And he was, he was probably like 30 hours from getting first to 100. And I don't know. I just, I haven't really been training because I, I was so frustrated with the fact that, that he was getting away with blatantly botting. And it, it just, it just frustrated me. So I kind of like gave up and really lost a lot of motivation to play and, and train. Anyways, uh, let's see here. I've got VP test MQ. I was doing VP test MQ, then K or test. And I think, yeah, I need to do this. I need to do a K and N W. This means yeah, let's see what this nice comment is. Uh, this means that Kmask is equal to Kmask and not temp Kmask. Effectively, the VMs that were going to fault set to one in the temp Kmask will be turned off, allowing us to keep... Uh, okay. Shit, that might not be what I want. Maybe I should just think through the problem. Kx or W validates that the permissions match. Oh, maybe that's what I was doing. Um... Let's see. K or test K2, K2. It might actually be cheaper to just do a compare at this point, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it's actually cheaper to do a compare, um, which is really weird. But uh, VP compare. I uh, compare with a, a memory access too, which is which is nuts, but it should be faster. Uh, VP compare equal, and that'll go into temp K mask, and we're gonna compare ZMM2 with K mask uh, with CS BC zero, and now that'll have uh, K or test. Uh, ZF flag is set if both are zero. So jump non-zero, if they're both zero, if they're zero, then none of them are equal to zero. If they're, okay, let me think through this. Uh, not much. Okay. Uh, we compare with zero. That'll set the bits if they are zero. This is gonna or test, and then that sets the ZF. ZF is set if both sources are zero. If it's non-zero, that means one of the bits is set, which means it faulted. Okay. So we're just gonna change this logic. Unless I can compare with zero better, but I don't know if I can. Um, uh, VP compare equal quad word. So if it's equal to zero, update that. That'll set it. So we want this k mass to be zero. If it's non-zero, then something was borked. And uh, we're hitting our int three for debugging, but I don't think we need it anymore. I think this should just work. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, online mask entered faulted 14, mask six three. Uh, we ended up trapping. Yeah, so we resolved all of those branches in parallel. We then returned out. We have seven defaulted common path one C. Um, 
common path 1c. Okay. And then JIT entry address is 1c, entering with 82 mask, which makes sense, I guess. Yeah, because we have two not zeros. Um, and then we go and we finish up those two not zeros and we're done. We trap them out and we're, we're complete. And I think that marks the end of indirect branches. Whew! Uh, let's do one more test. I'm going to throw in one more address that's kind of like way out in the boonies there. And we're going to make sure that this correctly doesn't have that branch resolved and will request that that branch gets pulled in. Which it should. Let's see what we got. Uh, we go in there, common path, we're going through. Uh, we then hit this, then one of them didn't resolve in our parallel walk, which is this, this 384. We have the old ZMM, we request a lift of this because we haven't seen it yet, we lift it, we generate these new things, we find the common path, we enter, we finish execution on 4.9, so three of them. Then we enter on 8.2, and then finally, at the very end, we enter on a VM20, which this will be. This is 20. This is finishing off the very last one, uh, and we actually cut it off with head, so we'll check this out. And here we go. We have mask 20.20. Trap, and yeah, there it is. There's the final trap. So that, that works. Okay. Woo! Hot damn. Hot diggity damn. Um. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, we need to do a conditional branch now. Let's just do a, um... Uh, we'll do a reg read. Uh, we'll do a graph dot compare. Uh, actually, a bcond. We'll do a bcond based on the b register. Actually, we'll do a branch on the a register instead of a bind. We'll do a branch on the a register. Uh, ilcond if it's equal. If it's not equal, I think I type them out fully. If A is not equal to one, then we want to go to the uh, end block. Otherwise, we want to go to the end block. <laughs> it's stupid, but I don't think I'm gonna, op I don't think my optimizer will turn that into an unconditional branch. It should, but I don't think it will. Which means, um, assertion failed. End block, end blocked. Be conned. Assertion failed LB to the branch. Algraph mods one. Uh, should only ever be an unconditional branch to this node. The fuck is this? Reduce. I see. What? Um, we can only reduce nodes that only have one entry node. True, one entry node here. We're trying to reduce end block. Ah, uh, end block only has one entry node. It's trying to coerce those two. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's not happy about this because they're the same block. Um, we can just do this temporarily. If it's not equal to one, go to main block, otherwise go to end block. Uh, invalid offset for mod RM, uh, 2139. Okay, so now we're hitting this. And this will this will be easy. We just have to update, oops. Uh, yeah, and that's for yeah, man.
Okay. Ninja. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, be conned. We're in be conned here. We put the dead dead in here. We're going to write in a... Just dead is sufficient to cause it to be the... Um, that's sufficient to cause it to be 32 bits, which is all that matters. So this is going to crash because it's going to deref. Ah, uh, dead actually might be in bounds. This might not crash. We're going to change this to like 7 FFF dead. That's good. That's out of bounds by 2 gigs. So I hope this crashes. Give me that good seg fault. Uh. All right, entering VM with mass 77. Do, do, do. Entering VM with mask 77. Mass 77. And then we enter with 63. Did we not crash? Maybe I make a massive constant storage table. No, I, I definitely crashed. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Online mass computed be that. Entering with 77. It's going in. Access violation. It masks those off. It then goes to re-enter. That's going to cause it to hit the conditional branch. And then that's when shit goes tits up. So uh, I know that those are 10 bytes. Um... Let's see. Okay. Do, do, do. So at the end here, I have fix ups. And that has the JIT address and then the label that needs to be fixed up. So at the very end, when the JIT is complete, I have no early returns, I don't think. I do not. Okay, so for JIT adder label in fix ups, we can consume it. That's fine. Uh, print need to fix up at X with label so we should be able to see uh, stream term we'll go in and GDB GDB uh, divergent stress GDB divergent stress test uh, we'll take a look at this this is going to crash at uh, 689, which is hopefully going to be, yep, there's our broadcast right there. And this is saying, need to do a fix up at 89 and 93. So 89 needs to point to aisle label 2, 93 needs to point to aisle label 1. Perfect. So at this point, we should be able to resolve those addresses uh, of these blocks. And I can actually cheese it a little bit because I know that I label all the blocks. So we're just gonna do this. The perf isn't ideal, but uh, perf doesn't really matter in this JIT. Uh, let block target is equal to this. This is gonna be label.0. Uh, and then we're gonna do a assembly.efolkasm source lib. Uh, uh, get instatter, resolve label, resolve label absolute address. There we go. Asm label absolute address, block target. Um, so this is going to be the, the PC. Let PC equals this. And then we're going to do let CS, uh, or the const is, or uh, Offset is equal to, and we're going to allocate in the constant storage database, 
So we'll do this, let index is equal to this, and then we give the index times eight. So offset is equal to this times eight. I guess I don't need the parens here. And this is gonna be for PC. And then that's gonna fix up that address with a, uh, what offset is it? At six? Yeah, offset six. So then I'm gonna do uh, <laughs> this. Standard pointer writes unaligned to JIT adder plus six as const u8, as u64 uh, uh, times eight, u32 times eight. Yeah, ah, it doesn't really matter. But then we'll do let offset is equal to u32. It's equal to offset dot try into dot unwrap. That's just gonna make sure that we can safely convert it, make sure it fits inside of our constant storage database length. Then we're going to write unaligned to that as const u32 offset. Um, update the JIT instruction uh, with the resolved uh, JIT address for the branch target. JIT adder plus six. Okay, that should work. Now, we're gonna add an int three up here at bcond right before we do these instructions, asm.int3. So we can inspect that those get filled in correctly, which they will because I don't make mistakes. Okay, my code doesn't build, so that's not a good sign. Uh, 981. PC, expected U64, yep, no problem. Oops. Uh, 988, yeah, it's mute. Now it fits in one line, doesn't it? Hell yeah. So add six to that, and then we update the offset. So now that will perform a different load from memory with the constant offset there. And I think, I think that will do the trick, man. Let's see. Send IPC. We have an int three. Ooh, 7FF dead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How's there another int three there? What? Oh, I put the int three in the wrong spot. Not that it matters too much. What? JIT address. Do I need to do write volatile unaligned? Is it not actually writing that? It should be. Uh, we'll just do write volatile. This is fine on xd 6 but uh, this is just a test. JIT adder plus six as mute u32 right in the new offset. Am I going crazy? 7FFF dead. What? Where the fuck am I writing? Prince updating at X with X. Jit adder plus six offset. What is going on? Biddy bip boop bip. Should be offset six. Come on. Updating those two addresses. B68A. Uh, B690. 
Updating B690. Oh! Um, I don't think the assembly gets copied into the JIT buffer until this function returns. It doesn't, yeah. That's writing it into the assembly stream. Um. <sighs> Let's see. Yeah, it hasn't been copied into the assembly stream. I might add a patch into here. Yeah. I see. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Um, I could have this return a mutable reference to the backing, and then I could modify it in place. Yikes. Uh, let's see. Assembly offsets. Fix-ups. And this is going to be dot len. And this will be dot len. This will be dot len. This will be dot len. Backing mute. Mute. Unresolved labels in stream, we don't care. Mute as mute slice. As slice mute. I don't remember which order. Fix ups for JIT. Uh, for asm offset, then I can do uh, asm dot backing mute. Um, asm dot backing mute, and that is we're going to index to asm offset asm offset plus four dot copy from slice. Now we can make it safe. Offset dot uh, two LE bytes. Look at that, we made it safe. You know what, I can actually have the unresolved label check in here because they're they should all be resolved at this point. As mute slice, really? Uh, and then just make this a refi boy. And that's going to copy, that's going to fix up the assembly offset plus four. We're going to fix up the offset. We got try into, adding that to the constant storage database. This is now correct. See, I told you I don't make mistakes. X10i PC. I think we missed... Yeah, we gotta we gotta add uh we gotta add six plus six plus six plus four. Yeah, we we're just patching over the instruction entirely, you know, no big deal. We didn't execute it though, so technically we didn't crash, right? There we go. Alright, now we have X one XG. At R11 plus OXF0, that's one of them. That looks very JIT addressy. And then F8, that looks very JIT addressy. X10i, X10i. Uh, yep, that's actually reentrant. Perfect. And then that one is. Oh, those are both traps, aren't they? F420, jump below. It's an I430. What do I have it jumping to? Main block. Main block has a... We should see like a DREF. 
Uh, false target is first. So this is the false target. This should be end block. Add one. Why are these the same? End block. That should be a trap. B8 and 30. B8 I should update with what do we got here? Oh, we don't print it out. Main block and that looks very main blocky. No, that doesn't look very main blocky. What's going on here? Um, like those are definitely JIT addresses, which is interesting. PC, PC is the assembly absolute address for the block target for block under blah. And then I update offset. Those are definitely blocks. What the fuck? Look up that block. Label. Label. Oh, did I do some copy pasta? Two target, false target. False target, true target. Push, FUA, true target, uh, false target, true target. What? 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 Let's check out the graph. Run it locally so we can get a graph. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these two because those are the traps. So this is our function. Block 0 to 1. 2 fall through. 1 up to back up to 1. Range conditional block. How is that happening? Let's take a look again. X to an IPC, X one G, X R eleven plus. OXFO, F8, X10I, X10I. Whoa. How? How? Um, yeah, true target, false target. And then here, look up block label dot zero. Print this resolves to resolve to this writing to, uh, I don't care about that. We're just going to say label PC. Let's see what we got. Add 1 to 30. Compare 30. Yeah, 1 is a trap. Yeah, they're both traps. And that's not right.
Okay. Uh, BM's reset. Resolve to B8 and 630. 6B8, 630. So let's take a look. X10I. Okay, that's the true target, or no, that's the false target. Uh, yeah, that was two. That should be a trap. And this one. What the fuck? What even is that? Oh, is that my instruction count? Let's see if I have instrumentation here. Add, compare, jump, carry, move, ret. Ah, that's my timeout check. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Yeah, it's been fine all along. There's the move dead. And this is the this is the loop. This is jumping back. Yeah, this is this is checking for a timeout. It's totally correct. Perfect. Well, at least I thought about it some more. In three. Bye bye. All right, that should infinitely loop, I think. Because we have no way of updating those. Some of them might trap. Oh, it didn't infinitely loop. Why didn't it infinitely loop? We're gonna read A. If A is not equal to one, we're gonna go to the main block. So a loop. And then A will not, it won't be equal to one again. Oh God. Uh, online mask FF. Online mask computed to be this. Go in here. If, if A is not equal to one, if A is not equal to one, go to the main block. Well, there are a couple that are not equal to one. So we had the faults, JIT entry updated. We re-enter with mask EB, which is good. Um, we then end up going into a trap. I guess, yeah, because this one's gonna trap uh, faulted DD, common path is 630. Online mass computed to be this, which are the two non-zero cases, looks good. JIT entry address to 630. Um, JIT entry address is equal to 630. Oh, it timed out. Oh my God, dude, it works. Dude, it works. That means I can run these two. I can have these trap right away. And we should see all of them complete. Oh my god. Dude, I think it's I think it works. Uh we enter with everything. Uh we mask off. We mask off two of the VMs because we clobbered the PCs. We go with the common path. Um, we then have an access violation. We mask off two more. We end up having a trap. Um, we enter VM with mass 63. Uh, we end up returning out. We have faulted now to 55. We then re-enter. We then clear out, uh, mask 2-2, which were timeouts. We then re-enter with one of them enabled, which is this PC1. You know, why didn't we pick up PC1? Because that's where we went to execute here. Right? Um, now I gotta, now I gotta reason through here. We entered with everything. We masked off the two that weren't starting from the same location, which is correct. Enter VM with 7-7 seven, seven mask, which is 3 and 7 masked off because those have a differing starting PC location. We then 
run them, we get an access violation, we fault out two of them. At this point, we enter with 6-3, uh, which is these two and these two. So we end up getting a trap with 4-1. We actually hit a trap. Yeah, 4-1. Is that Beacon not picking them up? Yeah, crazy. VP broadcast quad word. That is the false target. This is the true target. We're then updating. We then recompute the, comp uh, the equals. And then we go to the true target. And did we not bring anything else online? And I think we want to. I think when we first make that conditional branch if a is not equal to 1 if it's equal to 1 then we branch to the end block oh this is different the end block has a different jit address than a trap that's equal that makes sense okay so that is correct um so we have those traps, we have those faults get updated. We then pick a new common path. We recompute the online mask. And that's good. That is great. Dude, I think it works. I think it's done. I think it literally just works. I think it will just run VMs. It'll run VMs until all of them have run. And it will handle divergence. And if things fall off, they fall off. And it will go back and pick them back up. So, uh, let's see. ZMM31. Basically, any time we update, if we ever update the K-mask without updating the faulting set, which we do here, we have to update ZMM31 to make sure it's not stale. Uh, we're basically saying... We're, we're masking these things off. Here's where you pick them up to continue execution. This is the same thing. Um, ZMM31 has been updated. Jump to the branch location. I think it's done, man. Let's try it. 6502 test. Let's go. Uh, let's get rid of some of these prints. Oh, uh, let's get rid of a lot of these prints. Uh, um, honestly, I'm okay with these prints just to get rid of the... It's going to be a little noisy with those prints, but... Computing the lifetimes in that. Okay, perfect. Print before and after opto. Good. Now, aisle session, we added a bunch of prints all over the fucking place. VMs reset, gone. Uh, dump dot. Want to get rid of that. Uh, PCs don't care. Lifted don't care. Online don't care. Let's uh, try and format these. Okay. Uh, soft serve aisle session. Not using the aisle label anymore. Good. Good. I don't want it to. Uh, we didn't have any calls yet. Uh, calls, I think, should be fine. Uh, online and divergent stress test. 95 not being used. Aisle session not being used at 93. Okay. Code clean. Fucking no warnings or errors. Let's go. Let's go. Bam. Beautiful. 
171 fuzz cases per second. Sweet. Two unique crashes. Uh, crashing on eight. Interesting. Why does it think that's two unique crashes? Oh, one's a trap and one's a crash read. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Spin up them thready boys. Let's see what we got. See that perf, let's see that linear scale and fuck yeah. 18,000 fuzz cases per second. Damn right. And that's basically doing resets. Like these fuzz cases, actually we have those timeouts. Um, let's get rid of that timeout. Let's just, uh, let's just bind to A. So this will get rid of the timeout. Let's see. See what that perf is. Oh yeah. 11.3 million fuzz cases per second. Let's fucking go. <laughs> One unique crash, which is the trap. Yeah, that's what I fucking thought. I was about to say, I definitely can handle more than uh, 10,000 resets per second. This is basically resetting in a hot loop with a memory access. Honestly, I can just get rid of this memory. I don't even need it. Uh, we'll just have this branch directly main block. So this is just going to branch indirect. This is basically just going to trap. Actually, fuck it. Let's just trap. We'll leave that for now. Main block. Main block's just going to be dead. Comments everything else out. Um, branch to main block. Oh, we can just put a trap right here. We're going to do literally nothing but trap. Uh, I guess we need this. We'll load an immediate and then we'll trap. So this is, this is literally just benchmarking the reset speed that I have. Eleven point three million per second. That's actually I think I'm fine with that. So that's like my upper bound. That's basically the fastest I can fuzz, because that's the fastest that I can reset. Uh I mean I'm not even spending that much time resetting. That's like the entry. That's the cost of like entering the JIT and doing the context switch into a different like um assembly block. Wow. Well that's uh that's a thing. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. 11 million per second. God damn it. Ah, <sighs> deploy. Let's go. 6502 test. This is going to fuzz uh, OpenBSD C tags. I don't know if this is just going to work out of the box. We changed a lot of stuff. No. No, it's not going to work out of the box. Label already defined. Yes, but this one's actually not too difficult, I don't think. Let's take a look. Uh, is this in the very first block? It is. Which means I should be able to do this. I can run it locally with uh, without um, optimization so I can see a better call stack. Perfect. Label already defined. Soft serve uh, 633. What was that? Soft serve. Fulcasm. Yeah. Uh, so that's in full chasm. We want to be looking JIT location, asm stream backing. Lift. Ah, when I do backing is maybe when I resolve symbols. And I'm doing that on a drop. Unresolved labeled in streams. Things in line. Thread panicked. Unresolved labels in stream. Okay. Let's take a look. We got one thread running. Unresolved labels in stream. Okay. Is one of those blocks getting removed? Jit helpers. Jit, lift, drop in place, really, 371, 
an aisle session. I see. We're dropping the jet. Drop in place. Jit helpers. 103. Drop. That's going to drop the ASM backing. 684. Unresolved labels and stream. Backing. Yeah, when I drop that. Unresolved labels and stream. Really? Label already defined. Oh. That's, this is the, yeah, this is the real one that I care about. And the other one happens to be a very similarly related but different one. Uh, I think this is just not going to be unique enough. 633. Uh, actually, we want 855 in JIT. It's probably one we make, yeah, diverge. Diverge is not a unique enough label because uh, we're basing it on a block. If a block has multiple calls, that is Absolutely not unique enough. So we'll do inst ID. And now it's a unique label. Basically, if you have two calls in a block, then you end up with the same thing twice. Uh, son of a bitch. 855. Inst ID. Uh, inst ID is also... I need to also have the block ID. Blocked. Dot zero. Okay, those should be unique labels now. Block and instruction ID. It's impossible to have another instruction at that same location. A legal instruction. Perfect. Deploy. So this, in theory, should work. But we're not buzzing anything yet. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's a straight up a crash. Oops. Wrote the, ran the wrong thing. Uh, GDB 6502 test. Shit. How am I crashing? Oh, I branched to dead. Yes, I think I thought about that situation. Um. So dead, interesting, timeout, how is that possible? Oh, we merge in dead, and then, aha, aha, um, based on the way that we're developing this, we have a way that dead can, yeah. So we handle traps, which is actually just a really terrible idea because we we set them defaulted and then we mark them as handled again and we kind of like undo that. And what we're running into is um, we're getting into a situation where dead is being executed and that happens because dead is set as the last PC. Then we clear the faulting VMs here because we handled one of these VM exits on a trap um, which is going to be a, a big no-no, of course. So, uh, we need that to not be the case. So I might need to rethink the way that I'm doing these, like, traps. If VM exit caused... Caused VM exit. I'm just going to do this. I'm gonna move it up. If there's a VM exit callback, if cause VM exit is not equal to all disabled, then we'll do the callback and we'll pass in those fields. Actually, is that what I want? Uh... Yeah, I think it is. If handled VMs, and it, uh, 
then here I'm going to do result, uh, resulting online. Trap should not modify that. Trap will have to change that down there. But we'll say caused VM exit and equals with handled VMs. And equals not handled VMs. Uh, so invert the masked ones, and then that will mask off the ones that caused a VM exit, I think. I uh, can't do that caused VM exit and I don't have and assign implemented. Get the cause VM exit and then mask off handled VMs. Come on. It'll take a couple seconds to like, I think jit everything out. Oh, it looks very stuck. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yikes. Yikes. Oof. And let's see where our time is being spent. Non. None of them have completed. Is it this shit? CVME. But I'm so far gone. Cause VM exit is equal to cause VM exit and not handled VMs. Okay. And that means I'm hitting a lot of dispatches to VM exit callback, which is here. Let's see what we're returning. Mask none, mask none, a trap. So we're seeing like our, our file system emulation stuff here. End of fuzz case, mask none. Not, and not that, and F. That won't mask anything. Shit. Oh, did I break anything in here? Main adder. I'm trying to think if I broke anything, which I might have. I might have like changed something when I was doing testing here, and this like fuzzer doesn't work anymore. Set PC FF, that's good. File name address looks good. Okay, fuzz. Oh. Uh, Right force online. Clear that, extend from slice, resize, randomly mutate it, pick a random string and inject it, pick some flags, write to online, mutate length, clear, track eye count. Am I getting stuck in a loop? Did I break something? Oh God. Did I implement something just incredibly wrong? I don't think so. I don't think so. I really don't. Calls are the only like weird edge case, but calls should be correct. Yeah, calls should be fine. Ret should be fine from calls. CVME. Which one are we hitting? Are we hitting Malik? Uh, do I have prints in here? 
Oh, there's a Malik print. Let's try this. Well, it's not Malik. Uh, Malik. This is free. Nope. Right. Not right. Let's actually see if we're hitting any of these rights. Let's get rid of this. Exit code. So I'm not seeing any prints to the screen. Open. Oh shit. I set PC. I set PC. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Bye, break. All right, this will be fucking easy. Oops. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know what I did wrong. So, uh, set reg dot star PC. Basically, anywhere that we set PC, we're not gonna have that coherence. So, what I'm actually gonna change is in branch here. Uh, I'm just gonna do um, self dot. What does set PC do? Set reg PC cause beam exit. Self dot set reg uh, and then T what is PC T yeah PC reg so we're gonna set the PC reg for caused VM exit and then we're gonna set it to I guess they're gonna vary based on the targets so I need to actually use uh, set so set regs set reg That is going to merge. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we got this. So we're gonna do, we're gonna just merge into PC. Easy as can be. We're gonna set PC, uh, set reg, mask, set regs, T reg. Okay, yeah, all right. Self dot get regs t pc reg. Let old pc is equal to this. Self dot set reg. Set regs t pc reg. It's going to be equal to old pc dot merge on caused vm exit with targets. Perfect. So this is update the pcs. Update the PCs. So old PC get reg. Get the PC reg. Set the PC reg to old PC merged in with the ones that cause them exit and their targets, leaving the old ones behind. Um. You know I might actually need to change the syntax to set regs to take a mask. Just 
You shot this down. Oh no. Yeah. Because it doesn't know which ones it has to update. Because all of them changed. And I can't refresh all of them because some of them might be in non PC synced states. Um. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm just going to do. I think set reg. Set reg. Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do self dot set reg. Uh, VMID single. Uh, mask. Mask single VMID. And we're going to set it to PC. And we're going to set T PC reg. Okay. D. Perfect. So that will cause those to get set. And then set reg. We're going to have pub fn uh, update uh, zmm31 mute self. Uh, and then this is going to be the VMID U size self dot state dot get reg. Actually, this is the mask. Uh, updates ZMM thirty one due to a PC update. I actually. Reports PC update. Update ZMM31 due to a PC update on mask VMs. We're going to get reg. Mask. Uh, let PC is equal to get reg. Mask T PC reg. So uh, get the new PC value, lift it, and then update. And that's actually going to be uh, merge, mask, vector, splat. Get the PC register, lift that PC for this aisle session. Oh, I don't have access to aisle session in those. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, God. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't have aisle session in set reg. And I, I don't want to pass it in. That's gross. I guess... Oh, frustrating. While they're not all enabled, um, here's what I can do. Let PCs modify. I, I basically need to track if PC gets changed such that I can relift. Um, and that's a relatively hard thing to do. I can't do it right as the relifting occurs. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I can add state to the ILVM. Yeah. 
uh, struct ILVM. And this is going to be like... Uh, do I want to use mask for this or a, a, a list of bulls? I think I want to do a list of bulls. Uh, PC is modified. Bool. Uh, and then this is vector width. This is the tracks if PCs were recently modified. This is used to determine if we need to update X, uh, ZMM31 and update and potentially lift new targets. Fuck. PCs modified, bool, or false, target uh, vector width. By default, nothing is modified. Uh, we might actually be able to spin this into a, a cleanup. So we're going to do this. Self.pcs modified equals true uh, vector width. This is going to be a uh, set that all PCs are modified and thus need uh, refreshes. Then here, I'm going to go through through VMID uh, is modified in self.pcs modified.iter mute.enumerate. If is modified, get the PC for that VMID, resolve, uh, is modified equals false, PC is now uh, uh, cached. Okay, then we can move this up. To here, uh, go through all of these. If it has been modified, then we're going to update. So it starts out everything is modified. That will cause us to go through and lift all of these, replace all of the 31s. Then we'll set it to false. If it's not modified, we'll do nothing here. We'll literally just drop through. Um, MMU faults, I don't think I'm going to allow handling of. Technically, I do right now, but I'm going to get rid of that. Support. Okay, then that's going to determine which VMs should be run. So that's going to resolve all the target addresses. Perfect. So now what I need to do is in set reg, uh, when PC reg is updated, which it is down here, so go through each for VMID in caused vm exit dot iter, uh, extract the PC for that VM ID, and then set uh, update the PC. This will cause the PC to get updated and potentially relifted. Mass single VM ID TPC reg PC looks good. And then FN set reg. Won't that uh, lift JIT the same eight PCs when they are when they all start at the same? Yeah, it will. Uh, but it's fine. It won't relift it because it caches all of that stuff. So it's just going to be a hash table lookup. If reg is equal to T PC reg, then self dot... Self dot PCs... Updated is equal to true vector width. Uh, check check if PC is being modified. PC was modified. Uh, mark the caching of ZMM31 as stale and cause uh, and this in this case all PCs were modified and. Uh, mark the caching of ZMM31 as stale. 
Okay, and then in this one, we're gonna say if reg is equal to t pc reg, same thing, we're gonna grab that comment. And then in this case, we're gonna do self.pcs updated uh, for vmid in mask.iter. Self.pcs updated vmid is equal to true because this is not gonna necessarily update all of them. Um, mark the PCs which were modified as updated. So this is only gonna modify the ones that were changed, which might not necessarily be all of them. Okay, so set reg. And all we have to do is update that there, which will then cause that to get invalidated. Uh, ooh, PCs updated. Oh boy. Oh. Modified. Uh, partially Q, not implemented for T on register. Um, type register. Yeah, there you go. Partial, partially Q, now requirement. Fuck you. Uh, okay, uh, 279, get reg not found for this. Where do I do get reg? In soft serve IO session 277. Oh, yeah, this is gone. I hate how much this wants me to learn Rust. What is the register type? Uh, it can be anything, it's just an enum. It's up to the implementer of the target VM. So it allows whatever architecture you implement, you can make your own register types as long as they follow the template or the traits that I require. Okay, 416. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? PCs modify it, enumerate intermute. Ah, I can't do a get reg. Oh, I can't borrow self. Oh, that's f fuck you. Um, uh, if it's modified, so that iterator might hurt us. Middle will borrow a curl a hers here. I can do this. Uh, that clone. It's not that bad, it's just some bools. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, partial EQ for register not implemented. Yep, that's fine. So in this case, we know that we resolved all of them. So we can do self.pcs modified is equal to false vector with the above loop will have resolved all PCs. Mark them as no longer modified. And then for 6502, Falk IL6502 source lib, all I need to do is implement partially EQ on this register and I'm good. What is my color scheme? Yeah, it's just dark. Uh, oh, out of registers for register allocation. Fuck yeah. I'm fine with that. Current commits out of hardware regs, perfect. We're gonna go into Isle Graph mod FN optimize. And then we're gonna go scroll down here and we're gonna uh, get rid of dedupe because it uh, I don't have uh, registers spilling yet for my register allocator and I can't handle dedupe because it causes too many registers to be in use. Let's fucking go. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, lift that shit. Yeah, that's what I thought. Why, why, Lex? What happened? No VMs active? Crash right, accessing this, no VMs active, file session 1266. Uh, assert following VM, okay, this is on my list. I have something on my list that says the JIT entry address is wrong if all failed. 
if all faulted. Um. Enter JIT. Really? Oh, it's because we recomputed. I see. We go through here. We perform the, the recompute. Um, and then I guess here we can just say uh, nothing, uh, something to do. Hmm. I'm actually kind of confused here. Enter JIT. That's complaining because online is zero. Online should never be zero. Cool, we're finding bugs. Fucking love it. Uh, that happened on a fault. So let's see what happens on a VM fault. Uh, MMU fault, we go through, we check the cause VM exits, then we update the faulted VMs and mask off online. Uh, then we splat in dead to those. And then we loopy loopy. If they're not... While faulted VMs are not all enabled. While they're not all faulted. Really? Okay, let's just print some debug shit then. Uh, print. Print. Uh, uh, print. Let's say faulting VMs. And then this is online. Self dot faulting VMs. Self dot online. This will be easy. Faulted VMs. Well, no shit. They already died. I really like how you put asserts uh, that I'll know will fail when dev progresses further. Then when they fail, I know exactly what condition needs to be validated. Yes, I do that a lot, man. Dude, it's so important. I want that hex. Um, yeah. First there was test-driven development, then there's assert-driven development. I don't know, man. I do it all the time. Like, when I know that I'm cutting corners and I know that something's going to fail in the future, I put in those fucking asserts because then I, I'll know exactly what happened. Look at that. Online mask F7. Really? Faulting VMs F7, online mask zero. How does that happen? How does that happen? Online can get masked off here. Here it can get recomputed by things that are equal to the common JIT path. This is directly after a fault. Let's print out uh, VM exits. Uh, result uh, exit code. I need to be able to see when the exits are occurring. There's also the to do macro. Pfft, I've never used that before. I've used unimplemented and unreachable. I've never used to do. I guess I think I've seen it. I just kind of forget it exists. Let's see, come on. Uh, crash right. Okay, so we have an MMU fault. Uh, we then update. We had a fault on one. Crash right, accessing CO40. Online mask F7. Just an alias for unimplemented? Okay, cool. Crash right on this, faulting VMs F7. Mask F7, online mask is zero. That's when we go to re-enter. So we're hitting a fault, an MMU fault. That is a, it's an access fault. And we should be updating the faulting VMs based on cause VM exit. We splat out these dead boys. Yeah, we fault, isn't that the mask? Yeah, let's print out the, uh, Let's print out the resulting online and caused VM exit. Let's see. 
Maybe I got an MMU oddity here. I also don't think there should be divergence right now. Right to online. Cause view makes it. Oh, right there. Yeah. So I am zeroing out some of the lanes. One of the lanes I'm causing, I'm I'm forcing divergence by um one of these VMs should be different. And it indeed is. It's this one. Uh what do we got here? We got a mask 247, 247 caused faults. Whoa. Faulting VMs, mask zero, online mask F7. Okay, nothing is faulted. Then we have an F7 fault. Yeah. So F7 have faulted, online mask zero. Um, fuck, is this literally? Yeah, this is. JIT entry address, if all of the online VMs faulted. Dude, this is literally what I fucking wrote down. Yes! Holy shit. Here's what I'm going to do. So on an MMU fault, it sets up a re-entry location uh, to JIT entry address, which then causes us to not recompute the entry point. Dude, I'm so glad I hit this in real life. Like, I, I, don't, I don't like fixing things that I know were unimplemented. What's really interesting is that in the first stream, I said, I'm making a note for something. Let me put an assert down here. Oh, there is an assert that will hit if we hit that condition. And it's exactly what we fucking saw. If self.online, uh, if, if self.online is equal to caused VM exit, um, all VMs which were executing faulted. Thus, we need to not re-enter at the MMU instruction to retry it as it is now dead. Uh, as all VMs running the uh, MMU instruction are now gone. Bam! Fuck yeah! It's exactly what I expected. Filled, like, I, I second guess myself, and I don't know why I did that. Um, this is equal to none. Uh, remove the JIT entry address. This will cause us to recompute the new starting address based on the ZMM31 state. Fuck yeah. All right, that's exactly what I expected. That won't happen. What's really interesting is that won't happen if all eight VMs fault, because if all eight VMs fault, then all of them go to faulted VMs, and thus it'll break out of this while loop. Um, before hitting that condition. So it only happens if you have that, if you have all of them fault while another VM has diverged. God damn right. Oops. Okay, let's see. And I'm going to get rid of the prints in JIT, uh, which means I'm also going to get rid of the IT this time. That's why I had that as one line. JIT complete in that many M cycles. Return PC to JIT. Fantastic. Uh, 349. 364. RDTSC not being used. Cargo clean. Let's make sure no warnings or errors. We'll have the one on DD because we aren't calling that function. Holy shit. I think we've only fixed things today. So basically yesterday I wrote in this patch that would cause divergence by forcing one of the inputs to be different than all of the others.
Fuck yeah. There are the traps. Um, trap. Oh, uh, that's happening. Vector. Vowels. Trap zero. Else. It's like an unhandled thing. Uh, yeah, it's probably just due to due to that right force where we patch that in. Let's see what we got here. Let's fucking go. Boom. We're booking it. Okay, let's get rid of this print. Open. Don't need that. Get rid of the print of the data. Here we go. It shouldn't print anything but status anymore, I think. Good. Looks very statusy. What do we have here? We can close that now. We're gonna clear it, get that fresh run going so we can see everything. Okay, let's go. Stats coming in, fuzz cases coming in. We got our crashes coming in. Fuzz cases, let's get that number up. Oh, we're running single. We're running single core. What are we doing? Let's just change a one to a 256. And we're scaling that shit out. <laughs> God damn it. Let's go. I want to hear that thing screaming. Yeah, there's our crash. Six seconds. Nice. Our second crash, 11 seconds. Fuck yeah, and those are our only crashes. Hey, just an aside question. Do you pick one file to mutate in eight different ways for each lane, or do you pick a random corpus file and mutate for each of the lanes? It would be an interesting trade-off between types of differential coverage data. Yeah, absolutely. I, I typically pick the same original input and then mutate them in slightly different ways. That allows me to kind of determine if the mutation had an effect on the input file. Um, but, uh, it, it really varies, you know, it's, it's kind of tough to say, um, having a random input for each would cause pretty heavy divergence, uh, which would then cause them to be fucking off and doing different things. But anyways, there we go. Uh, we're at 7152 coverage, which I think is the maximum coverage, maybe like 7170. Uh, so we've already basically plateaued on coverage here. And we're running 33,000 fuzz cases a second. And that's with the new, the new implementations of these branches. And I, I think that's about the same purpose I was getting before. Yeah, 12 billion instructions per second being emulated. Um, which is really not that bad for 8-bit. Because everything's being shifted masks. You almost need to measure in giga instructions? I know, dude. I know. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Terra instructions for a second. <laughs> yeah. 12.5 billion per second. We'll let this climb a little bit just to see what it settles at. 36,000 fuzz cases per second now. Remember, this is emulated 6502 running C tags cross compiled from OpenBSD using a terrible compiler. <laughs> <laughs> the 6502 doesn't give you much freedom in compilation output. I'll tell you that much. Like, everything's hitting fucking memory. This is basically absolute worst case performance because everything's an 8 bit operation. Everything's shift and masked. Everything is getting sign and zero extended almost every single instruction. Um, actually, there's probably multiple sign extensions happening per instruction. So, yeah. What exactly are we doing? Well, we just fixed up uh, kind of the last patches that I needed to finish in vectorized emulation. Um, and now we're technically fuzzing C tags. Um, and these statistics are kind of telling me like health stats about this fuzzer. So this is telling me that I've got 180 seconds that I have had that have been uh, running. This is telling me the number of fuzz cases I've run. This is telling me the number of fuzz cases that I'm getting per second. This is telling me the total number of instructions that I've emulated in billions. This is the number of instructions I've emulated per second in billions. 
the number of inputs that I've generated. So every time I get new coverage, you'll see this input go up as I save an input that caused that coverage spike. Uh, this is the number of unique uh, PCs that I've observed um, in the fuzz cases. And then this is the number of unique crashes I have, which happens to be two, because I think I actually patched out one of the crashes. Um, there were three crashes that we know of. So I think I patched one of those out. But now I'm just waiting for this to kind of plateau. I want to see what these numbers will like plateau at. Obviously, this number will stop climbing this like billion instructions per second. But I'm extraordinarily happy with this data. Uh, this is telling me that my I have not impacted the fast path performance uh, for my emulator. Uh, which is fantastic because I don't care about the slow path. The slow path, there's already divergence going on. It's not a big deal. Yeah, so right here we just saw a coverage spike of uh, seven, eight new inputs, and we saw or uh, coverage, and we saw one new input got saved to save off that state, such that we can go back. And when we look at this, we see that we have uh, 38,000 fuzz cases a second and 233 inputs. So we're visiting 38. 500 divided by 233, we're visiting each input about 165 times per second. So the second we get new coverage, it's already being tested out many, many, many times. So now technically you have to actually divide all these perf numbers by eight because I'm running the same input through all of them. I'm not actually doing vector heist right now uh, because until today I couldn't in this version. So today... That is now solved. Uh, vectorized emulation is now, uh, I'm pretty sure, complete. This implementation now handles all edge cases. It handles all loads and stores, all branches, um, optimization passes, re-entry into, uh, into return sites after calls. Um, so I'm pretty sure this kind of marks getting everything done. So I think... Um, like, basically, the fuzzer that I wrote was just jamming the same input into all, all of the VMs. It was the exact same one into all of them. Um, so what I can do is I can... I, I need to kind of generate different uh, inputs for these. And right now, I'm not doing anything in a meaningful way because my the emulator that I wrote, this... Um, this uh, libc emulator that I had to write for 6502 um, actually just assumes that all of the VMs are running. Well, it goes by caused VM exit, which actually might be okay. This actually might work. Cause VM exit, cause VM exit, cause VM exit. I don't use online, do I? Fuzz. That's fine. Writing those things in. Um, I actually can probably corrupt some things in here. Son of a bitch. Yeah, we can probably get this running real fast. So what was it taking us? I think like nine seconds to get both crashes, which are the only two crashes I have. I've run this overnight. Gang. There's one. Nine seconds. 11 seconds. Okay. So let's see if by... Uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that a different input gets injected into all these. Now, the problem is I might be actually giving the same addresses to these. Yeah. Alk size, checked add. I don't know if I, if I wrote this libc emulator uh, correctly to handle divergence. And if I didn't, then I can't directly smash in... Um, different inputs because then these would diverge and things would get really really fucked up in fact i see uh, active allocations context 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 input vector context active allocations Yeah, that's the context for. Yeah, yeah, this is not this is not uh, vectorized safe, so I'll need to probably go through and re-implement all these things. Um, otherwise, we're gonna end up with like setting allocations to the wrong states, and uh, I mean, I guess 
it might actually be okay here in those allocations. It it might it might it might be fine. Let's uh let's corrupt some shit. Right in the input file. Is this write the whole input file in? File desk handles an open file name string. Inject the fuzz input. Get fuzz input zero. Uh, fuzz inputs. Let's check this out. Fuzz inputs is equal to some input. Input is equal to that take on wrap. We then put that back in its place. There we generate the fuzz. Fuck it. Fuck it. For vmid in caused vm exit dot iter. Fuck it, dude. I'm not scared. VMID. VMID. Uh, let injection VM is equal to a uh, mask. Uh, single VMID. Caused VM exit. It's going to be inject VM. We're going to set the permissions to zero for the whole file length. Then we're going to set the permissions for only exactly the number of bytes that we're injecting. And then we'll set the uh, inject VM. We'll write in the input file. And then we're taking from each VM ID, going through each of those. Uh, that should be putting a different input into each. Now, I'm not generating different inputs right now. Uh, 323 uh, caused VM exit. So let's take a look here. Obviously, this is, I think I generate the same input for all of the cases. But basically, if I see a bunch of new crashes, I know that this is invalid. Um, uh, there we actually saw a read. Interesting. No, I think that's fine. I think those are um, the two crashes we have. I'm going to let that run for a second. Uh, then down here, mutate input. Unless I generate different fuzz inputs. Dude, I don't fucking know if I am yet. Let's check. Uh, for fuzz input in vm.fuzzinputs.irmute, take the fuzz input as mute.unwrap. So this happens every fuzz case. So every fuzz case, we set up, we reset the allocator state, we clear the active allocations, we set up the allocation base, um, we get access to the the input. Uh, let's see, input dot take, getting get an existing input from the database. Oh, I see. So that gets the mutate input. This is just like a ah. This is just scratch stuff so we don't cause allocations every iteration. I, I literally can't afford to allocate every fuzz case. Like, I would bottleneck on allocations. Okay, then we have generate. We'll have one in four chance of generating a new input. Uh, if we're not generating, then if we, we get a random input from the input database and we extend that so mutate input becomes an existing input otherwise we have to set generate to true if we don't have any inputs in the corpus yet uh, we'll set generate equal if generate is set then we're literally going to set it to a random length with four ones so you're gonna have a's then we're gonna mutate the input we're gonna randomly mutate up to eight bytes uh, we're gonna pick some strings and randomly smash them in there these are like well-known strings for C tags that we picked out. I guess I'm doing an allocation every fuzz case. Um, here I'm constructing the string, which is a really gross way of passing the parameters in. And then here I end up creating the fuzz inputs for each individual VM. And here I'm going to mutate some more. Mutate each VM a bit more. And we're going to do very similar logic to this. Uh, paste, and if the fuzz input dot length is greater than zero, then pick up to random, up to eight bytes, pick a random index, and jam in that index a random thing. 
So all of them are going to be forked from the same input. They're all going to start off from the same input. Then I'm going to modify each of those individually. And then input, that's in context mute, which I don't think I use. Because here I get the fuzz input for this VM. Input.len. Yeah, so that input is just so I don't have to perform that allocation every time. Uh, we got some borrow issues. Uh, we can't do rand. Mutable borrow happens there because we're doing intermute. Um, yeah, so... Ah, uh, son of a bitch. Yeah, it doesn't like that. It does not like that. How do I want to do this? Fucking lifetimes, man. Uh, random on eight. That's because it wants to borrow VM. Let's see if I have an RNG. Yeah. RNG there. Okay. What do your crash files look like? Just a string of raw bytes? Uh, it's actually up to the, the fuzzer to save those, I think. I don't think I automatically save the crashing inputs. Maybe I do. I don't know. I could check. Um, but we'll, we'll go take a look. Uh, we'll write them out once we figure this out. Uh, this is basically just uh, an RNG issue. Um, yeah, that's frustrating. I don't want to do this. I mean, I can do it the gross way. I do this pattern a lot in Rust. For fid in vm.fuzz inputs.len, <laughs> zero dot dot, fuzz input is equal to fuzz. Uh, vm dot fuzz inputs. Uh, here we can do vm dot fuzz inputs. Ss fid fid. Uh, vm dot fuzz inputs. I'm not worried about the perf right now, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, here we'll do this. Fill is equal to vm vm dot fuzz inputs fid dot len if the len is greater than zero if the fill is greater than zero then we're gonna do rand up to fill and then here we'll do vm dot fuzz inputs fid index there you go fuck you lifetimes god son of a bitch uh option vector Yeah. It's probably not going to like that. I might need to do as as mute. Really? Dot on wrap. Uh, on wrap. Yep. Uh, here we have to do as mute. As mute. It's gross. I don't care. It's a fuzzer. Who cares? As mute, as mute. It's not even really a fuzzer. There we go. <laughs> Bye. All right, this will uh, theoretically be generating different inputs. Uh, we'll probably see a, a big fuzz case perf hit. Wow. Okay, we're seeing traps. Um. Yeah, what happens? Trap. Trapping on a code that we don't know. Uh, when can that happen? If the val is ff, vals.extract, oh, shit. Uh, vals.extract, zero, the, well, that's not going to work. Wow. 
No fucking way. Dude. Um. Dude. I think... Hmm. Uh, actually, those are fine. We want the spew. Give me that spew. Bring on the spew. Let's see that spew. All right. Trap zero vector. Lane, 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 lane. Yeah. It's ex it's extracting. It's extracting uh, this lane, which is the wrong code, and then it's like, dude, what the fuck is this code? So, I have a trick to this um, that will actually fix everything, but it's a little bit gross. Uh, for vmid in caused vmexit.iter, vmid uh, let caused vmexit is equal to mask single vmid. This is going to cause literally all of this stuff to run for each VM that exited. But I don't have to worry about the correctness in this case. All right. Here. So we don't do anything in the other case. So we're going to go through each VM ID. We're going to replace caused VM exit with VM ID. Go through here. Any place that we iter here. It's really kludgy, it's really fucking kludgy, I know, but it, it makes sure that we never end up writing to the wrong things. We do one at a time. This is a this is perfectly fine for first pass. In this case, we actually don't need this inject VM anymore. Because we're only doing one at a time. Uh S VM ID caused VM exit. Boom. Holy shit. Expected. Oh, we have to pump out a resulting mask, which is whether or not they've been handled. Um, let mute. Ooh. Let mute. I can't have the return. Um... Let mute handled is equal to mask none. In this case, uh, this will now be a continue. We're going to do a uh, caused VM exit dot. <laughs> enable. Uh, oops. Uh, handled. Enable VMID. So we have handled that. That is an end of a fuzz case. Return here. Return that we handled all VMs. Well, that's not true. Handled.enable VMID. Continue. Um, return mask none. Uh, oh, that's saying that none were handled. Wait. That was returning mask none, saying none were handled. Okay. And that one's returning caused VM exit, which is returning the mask. Okay. All right, let's just read through this code. Uh, in this case, and a fuzz case... Uh, didn't handle, want the fuzz case to terminate. Perfect. Ignore that. In this case, uh, we want to set that we handled this one because we advanced the PC past the trap. We return out the 16-bit pointer from malloc. Um, oh, that's return null. But it was, that returning null is still successful. Uh, okay, that returns null. Then this is cause VM exit. So any place that we see that, we're gonna do this. 
here we're gonna update this. Here we're gonna update that. And here we're gonna do that. And this one we're just gonna ignore. Uh, oops. I DD'd too hard. Paste DD. Trap, that will print in that case, mask none. Uh, what's mask none? If it's not a trap, yeah, if it's not a trap, then we return mask none. Otherwise, we're gonna fill in handled. Nero will return handled. Yeah, we got some issues. 291. Vals. Looking for a val. Ah, yes. Uh, let val is equal to uh, valves.extract vmid. Inject VM 336. Didn't I change all those? Oh, this this does need to be VMID. I see what I did. Yep, 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 yep. S ing VM with uh, caused VM exit. Well, that's uh, ballpark close. Please don't catastrophically fail. Uh, I think those are valid crashes. I think they're just different input lengths. Yeah, 16 unique crashes. Um, crash read, accessing those. How do I report crashes? Let me see. Crash read. I do that here. Crash read. Crash, space, shit, it is here. Crash, space, crash that accessing. Okay. So if it was an MMU fault, go through each of the ones that caused the VM exit, extract the address, create a key, which is the type, the size, and the address that caused the crash, create this hash for it. Um, stepping by eight, which is suspect. No, I, I think I think we're just seeing duplicate ca crashes, because how do I handle this? Num crashes is stepping by eight. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Which is how many lanes? Yeah, I agree. Um, so we take the PC, we or the address that faulted, accessing this. Oh. Oh, uh, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes so much sense. It's because they're getting different allocation bases. Because we're running one at a time. So when they all want to alloc, we're going to give each one... We're going to treat them as eight separate allocs and give different bases out to them. Which will then cause uh, different addresses. And we weren't seeing eight crashes before. This is actually fucking correct. <laughs> It's actually correct. God damn it. Hot diggity damn. Subnet, thank you so much for the for the sub. Hell yeah. Gorgeous. Your hands inside mine. All right. So did we hit those crashes faster? It took like 11 seconds before. In theory, we could hit them faster here. Probably not because we're not doing the full input generation. We should hit them in about the same time, uh, which it looks like we do. Yeah. Nice. Free emotes for people? Fuck yeah, hooking it up. Okay, so this is really inefficient. Um, it's actually really hard to say, uh, how much of the perf we're losing. Like, we've lost a lot of perf, of course, right? But we're also running vectorized, so we're masking things off and re-executing partial VMs and doing all sorts of shit. But we're also, we've also destroyed the performance properties of our libc emulator. We basically made it 8x slower in all cases. <laughs> like, we've... Pretty much made it as bad as you possibly can make it. 
Uh, the correct way to implement this would be to group these and batch them based on if they're doing common things. If they're doing the same thing, then you can batch them all. Um, so it's, it's genuinely difficult to see, uh, but we can prove that by going down here. We can remove the per input mutations, and we can see what the perf goes to. And this will, now they're all running, so divergence is no longer part of it. It'll be fast path again. Um, but we'll see how much our perf is affected. Uh, and god damn, if, it, if we're running 15k fuzz cases a second again, and we're not back up to 30k, uh, then there's a damn good chance that we literally just hurt the libc. It looks like we're going to climb past 15 pretty fast here. We're probably climbing on our way to like 24k. I've been going through all the paper reviews and I finally caught a stream. Well, welcome! Yeah, this stream was a little bit unexpected. I mean, not really. I mean, I expected it when I laid, laid in bed last night and I planned out what I wanted to do with my day today. But are you submitting recon CFP again? Sure, I don't know when the CFP goes out, but I'll submit it. I submitted for infiltrate as well. Um, I don't know if I got infiltrate. I'm not sure. I think they had some really good talks uh, this year. It's hard to say. Like the the talk that I submitted was based on a poll that I did on on Twitter. It's not like the most glamorous, fancy um, talk. Uh, Infiltrates also single tracks, so it, it's gonna be hard to say if they're gonna accept a talk like that. But I would hope, like Dave Itell knows me well enough that I would hope that he would reach out to me and say like, "Yo." Um, like, we want you to give a talk, but not necessarily on that topic that you submit. Like, can you, like, what else? Like, because he knows that there are a couple topics that I can talk about right now that would be interesting. But, who knows? I mean, they could have a bunch of good talks. It's, it's hard to say. Like, I genuinely don't know what my reputation is. I realize I can be a little bit, uh, uh... I can be a little bit uh, aggro with some of my uh, comments about how things are done. <clears throat> are you live reading the but Rust Bucket Infiltrate? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. that, that's what I'm doing. It's going to be an hour long. I'm going to read it super fast. Look at that. Look at all them crashes coming in. Whew! Beautiful. All right. Um, yeah, it looks like we are paying about a 2x performance loss by having divergence. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, re it's really not that bad. <laughs> like, we're corrupting these inputs and running different inputs through, and we're, we're still... We're running all of them to completion, which is something that I did not have in my old version of vectorized emulation. This is the best version... Now, this is officially the best version I've ever had. I don't have, like, register coverage in some of these fancy features, but those literally take 10 minutes to add. Not fucking hard. Um, so, yeah, coverage is at 1067, which makes sense. The, the perf is halved, so it'll take about twice as long to get to the same uh, coverage numbers. But, yeah, 5.4 billion instructions per second with divergence. This is, this is truly running eight separate inputs through and letting them diverge and cause the machine to do different things. And I handle all those. And quite frankly, a 2x perf cost is not too bad given I have an 8x perf overhead. And this is what I've talked about a lot uh, at conferences. People kind of always ask, like, how realistically are you actually running things in parallel? Well, in this case, I'm running like 50% parallelism. Like, I'm, I'm basically, um, I'm getting like a 4x of perf compared to scalar execution. Because uh, I'm half of what I got with no divergence, which is 8x. So it's, yeah, it's still about 4x faster than native execution. Um, now, I'm not doing heavy corruption. Uh, what's interesting is that the corruption will now affect the divergence amount. Now... There is a plateau of that. If you corrupt so much, you end up with 
most inputs going down the error path, and you actually will speed things up. Uh, so let's see what we got here with 64 bytes of corruption instead of 8. Up to 64 bytes. So perf might go up. It's really hard to say. Shit varies. So... Or perf could drop. There's a, there's a good chance that perf could drop because now we have heavier divergence, which is causing us to not run vectorized as frequently. But vectorized emulation, it, it's, it's like part of it is understanding the ramifications of the mutations you're performing, and it's kind of on you to make sure that the inputs have something in common. Like, there's no reason. Remember that this is running on a 256 core box, so... The 8 VMs you want to have a slight mutation on, but the 64 or 256, you can have massive, completely different inputs. For all I care, it doesn't matter at all. So yeah, it actually looks like we hurt performance there. Uh, coverage, we kind of hurt the growth of coverage. Okay, sweet. So I think I want to try and get... Um, I think I want to add register coverage. So let's see what we can do here. So, um, okay. Mutate input. This is going to get an, the input. It's going to clear it out. This is going to look up an existing input and create mutate input based on that input. And then generate is going to create something filled with four ones up to a maximum size. At no point are we taking an actual C file from disk. So then we randomly mutate up to eight bytes. This, I'm pretty sure, is giving us a lot of coverage that is undeserved, in my opinion. Uh, we are using a string dictionary here to look up um, like known good strings. These are fine. This is literally just setting up the command line args to cause it to run in different states. Um, then we have write force. This is writing in the file name address. Uh, this is writing in... This is making sure the mutate input didn't exceed a side. Size, this is updating everything, and this is giving access back to uh, mutate input. So, this should dramatically hurt our... Um, this should dramatically hurt our coverage. I hope so. We get to the 7,000s. I would love to see this in, like, the 3,000 range, 2,000 range. If it goes to 7,000... Ah, uh, you son of a bitch. We're going to see. Hi, bro, you don't play retro cores? I do play retro cores. Uh, just not right now. Top axe skill. Hell yeah. I should be training right now. I should absolutely be training right now. Because I can now, I can now definitely be the first one to get 100 skills. No problem. No fucking problem. All right. Yeah, 6156 coverage. It looks like we're plateauing out. Having those strings, those those strings that that I know are like known good strings, and injecting those in, is a dramatic improvement of the coverage. And that's because there's no way that I can generate those strings, right? Let's look at the, some of the complexity of these strings. Uh, Prend def. Like, it's very unlikely that I ever generate that string, right? It's just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so, what I would like to do is I would like to find those strings. Uh, I would like to find those strings... Uh, I'd like to have these strings automatically found for me. Because I, I don't like I don't like having to tell it how to get coverage. I want it to find I want it to have the exact same coverage when it has completely random inputs with no influence external. So let's take a look. Uh, let's see. So let's add some let's add some register coverage. That's gonna get us probably a little bit. Um, to do that, I'm actually going to turn off one optimization pass. I'm going to turn off regprop, because regprop will cause uh, registers to be, like, 
not updated, it'll cause things to be deferred to the last update of a register. I want the registers to update exactly um, where they are. What is this program? This is a this is an emulator right now. So this can emulate basically whatever I want to emulate. Right now we're looking at 6502, which is what was used on the NES and Apple II and SNES and a lot of old hardware from the 70s, 80s, 90s era. Um, it's pretty much the common processor. It's like the Raspberry Pi of the 80s and 90s because it was like the cheapest part. Okay. So, I need to go into the JIT, uh, Folkyl source, uh, I'll graph JIT. Let's take a look here. Uh, coverage, code coverage JIT. Here we go. If we have the CC JIT, we're going to line the instruction and then we're going to generate this hash. Um, and we're gonna patch that in. So we're gonna we're gonna call we're gonna call uh, racks and RBX. So racks and RBX are two values that I can use to cause coverage to increase. Um, and let's see what I do on coverage events. Coverage PC info. I'm gonna hash those together. Perfect. I'm already fucking set. Uh, all I have to do is go to reg write. Check this out. Check this shit out. Uh, we're going to go into here. We're going to generate our code coverage JIT here. We're going to check if there's divergence, uh, which I did in B, uh, not in Bcond. I might do it in Bcond, actually. Um, yeah, let's grab the one from uh, branch indirect. Vectored permute quad word. Uh, so we're going to do this. Got us ballpark, reg right. Yeah, you're about to, you're about to see the real shit. If we have a CC JIT, let's, uh, let's just do this. Clean some of these up a bit. We're going to do a permute of the PC address. Uh, in this case, we're going to permute the value that's being written. Since we're executing the same instruction, the target reg is always the same. Um, but the value may change. So what I'm doing is I'm going to I'm going to get the value that we're going to write out. I'm going to A permit to ZMM0. I'm then going to compare to see which ones are equal to val. Uh, I'm going to do XOR W with that, and then I'm going to jump non-zero diverge. Uh, we'll grab this because it's the same. So we'll generate that label down here. Um, this is going to be, we're going to call this no diverge instead. So if there's no divergence, so <clears throat> permute the value we're about to write to a register. And we're going to write it into all locations in ZMM0. Then we're going to see if any VMs that are actively running have a different value in their uh, ZMM0. We're going to then XOR the K masks. So they should all be equal. So this should become 0 if there's no divergence. This is going to check. There's no divergence. And then we'll go here where we'll do asm.label. Um, uh, no diverge. Let's see. I have 89 skills, almost 90, but really hard to train on monsters. What's your suggestion? Yeah, you got to get a monk. Got to get a monk. It's pretty much the only way. All right. Perfect. We set up that label, no diverge. So basically, if there's no, if we're not writing a different value to the register, then we're going to skip over. Uh, we have a PC here. A PC, in this case, um, we can actually grab this from, I think I have like recent PC or some shit. I think I store it. Most recent PC. Uh, cur PC.
So this is computing the information that we're going to log. Um, so we'll do PC, let PC equals most recent PC.unwrap. Should exist. At least with 6502. Not necessarily in all emulators, but in 6502 it will exist. So basically, this is going to see if there's any different values being written to a register. Remember, we're on the exact same instruction. So if a different value is being written, it's due to the user input, input influencing that register. Um, cool. Uh, coverage, blah, blah, blah. Don't really care. So then in this case, uh, there's no divergence. Is there? Uh, divergence actually is possible, isn't it? Yeah, let's see what we get. Um... This is only going to, this is going to create one record saying divergence occurs on this instruction. At this PC, divergence occurs is what this is going to do. Uh, but I need to, I need to actually make a new identifier for this. So RBX, instead of XORing it, I'm going to do move immediate one. Because the, the code coverage entry itself uh, for that instruction, because we are covering code coverage right now. Um, the code coverage itself uses uh, slot zero, so slot one will mark this as a different type of coverage, because that was actually not doing anything, um, because it was the exact same coverage record being created for the same PC, because it would create it when the instruction started, and then it would create the same record on here. So now this will create a different record. Uh, Hard-coded size change, perfect, uh, 555. Um, yeah, so that's... That's because we end up... Um, get instruction uh, cur PC 10. Um, CC JIT. No diverge. So here we're going to patch over the instruction. We're going to replace the instruction. Uh, OK. Vector patch. Here we're going to get the instruction address. We're going to get the PC. Uh, and then we're going to replace it with a branch uh, 29 minus 2, I see. So let's just say uh, XOR. An XOR is two bytes. A move RBX should be uh, five bytes. Should be an increase of three bytes. 32 now. Uh, there's our Rex prefix on that, potentially. Yeah. Yeah, there's a Rex prefix on there. I guess my assembler is emitting a lot of Rex prefixes then. Fuck. Hard code size change. Is it 31? <laughs> it's one of these. Uh, move RBX immediate one. Uh... Oh, that actually might be 34. It might be Rex and a mod RM byte. Nah, it's this. It's this. We got it. We, we, we guessed. We guessed our way through. Here we go. Uh, now we got more coverage. No surprise. So now coverage is going to tell us, um, it's going to tell us where unique register writes occurred, when our, where a divergence register, divergent register write occurred. Um, and how do I save coverage? Coverage. Create a hash for this entry. Um, add input. For that, in caused VM exit. Yeah. Okay. That should be okay. I don't know. It's, it's really hard to say now that this coverage number is not the... 
uh, same coverage number. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another counter for specifically instruction coverage so we can track that. Let's do this. Yeah, I don't think register coverage is really gonna get me anything here. It's It's extraordinarily hard to say. Um, values, input hash, PC info. I could also go to block coverage to get some perf speedups, because having instruction coverage is uh, not free. It's pretty cheap, but it's not free. Um, coverage DB. Um, compares, I don't think, compare coverage isn't really going to get me anything here. Uh Yeah, what do I want to do for this? Let's uh let's make a database, an atomic U size. This is going to be the um code coverage uh coverage that is explicitly uh coverage that is just from code coverage. Atomic U size new zero. Coverage DB uh, for that. Oh, we do write out coverage. Nice. And we write out the info. Fuck yeah. God damn it. Uh, this is coverage, and this is, we'll do eight code coverage. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get rid of binsters. I don't fucking care. Binst. I don't care about the total number of instructions I've run anymore. Um, code coverage. Isle session dot code coverage dot uh, load ordering sequentially consistent here. Uh, if Info is equal to zero. Uh, I'll session dot code coverage dot fetch cover edge dot fetch add one ordering tisk 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 ordering sequentially consistent. What do you mean code coverage double colon? Uh, we already have one. Fuck is that? Code coverage table size? Oh, um, yeah. We'll just call that code coverage table. Code coverage JIT, code coverage table, code coverage, uh, code coverage table. Code coverage, JIT table, I think we're good. Okay, so now I'll have a count of the coverage that we have, and we'll see if we can get back to 7,000. We are at like 6,125. Uh, 7,000 is totally reachable. I don't know if register coverage is gonna buy me that much here. Uh, I don't want a new line. Uh, coverage space. See what we get here. What are we up to today? Well, we kind of solved all of the problems. Wow, that fits to the character. It fits. All right. Yeah, coverage climbing. Good. Uh, there are crashes are coming in. Looking great. Code coverage 56. Come on. Let's see fucking 7,000. Come on. If we see 7,000, it, it literally means like we quote unquote solve strings. There's 6125. Come on. Come on. 
Come on. How many fuzz cases are we getting? We're getting a decent amount. I might be able to up some of the uh, divergence tracking stuff. Yeah, see, we're getting coverage increases here. So code coverage is not increasing, but coverage is. And that means that we were able to find registers that we control that didn't affect code coverage to increase. And then we generated new inputs based on those. So this, this number is increasing faster than this number, which is fantastic. Um, it, it means that we're latching on to different types of coverage events uh, and we'll likely be able to see bumps here uh, because of these events. It, it's just, it's causing us to save more inputs, right? We've already done a million fuzz cases and we've only saved 352 inputs, right? That's a problem. 352 inputs out of a million fuzz cases, that means we're throwing most fuzz cases in the trash. So to solve that problem, we can ramp. Uh, since I know that this is... Uh, since I know that this is, um, uh, since I know that everything here is basically going to be, uh, 8-bit values, since we're looking at 6502, um, what I can actually do here is I could potentially add, uh, I could grab the value, the differing value, maybe? and whack that in there as, as the information field. Um, but I would have to extract the bytes. I'm trying to think how I wanna improve this coverage here. Let's actually see if register coverage is getting us anything. Let's, uh, we need a graph. God, these, these, these diagrams actually turned out fucking fantastic. Really happy with those. Uh, stream term, let's go into, uh, soft serve 6502 test, and then, uh, arm coverage, and I want to do a scoop from filand of coverage dot text here. So, this is the coverage, all the different records. It's basically the ones are indicating register coverage, the zeros are indicating um, uh, uh, code coverage. So I could actually get Ida fired up here. Nice, all my tests passed. Hmm. Um. Let's do uh, plot coverage dot pi. Uh, we'll do, we'll call this coverage.py, uh, import os, os.system, scp, fileland, coverage.text, dot, uh, re, re.compile, this is going to be the coverage event, we're going to have an ox, 0 through 9, A through F, plus space 0x, zero, 0 through 9, A through F, plus quote re.findall uh, for, uh, we'll put these in little brackety boys, and we'll have the uh, PC and the info in re find all open coverage dot text read print pc info should work uh, pc equals hex pc or in pc 16 info equals int info 16 print pc info that should work python coverage dot pi son of a bitch i should read the file Son of a bitch, I should. <laughs> Finder. There we go. Nice. That's parsed out. Okay. Uh, let's get some more info going now. Um. 
coverage, 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 cov coverage, coverage, cov cov coverage. Uh, I need to timestamp with the. So this is writing out the whole thing. Ah, shit. Hmm, I don't like that. It's gross. Um, I'm gonna cache that. That's our main loop. Uh, let mute last cov print equals zero. Last cov print. I'll session coverage db dot len. Uh, then here I'll do. It will do. Uh, let uh, CDBL, coverage database length. Uh, this is going to be this. Since this thing is going to get updated atomically under us, we need to actually do this. So CDBL, we're going to write out these records to this file. Uh, they're writing out the whole file. So here I'm just going to do... Uh, let mute file equals uh, file create coverage dot text uh, unwrap. And then here I'm gonna do write to file dot unwrap uh, file dot flush dot unwrap. Then here for coverage record in that and that, we're gonna get the coverage, and then here we'll do uh, last cov print is equal to cdbl. There. So get the coverage database length, go through the last coverage print to there, we don't need this coverage string anymore. Uh, append coverage to the coverage file. That now means that I can add a couple more fields. We're going to have the um, fuzz cases, stats.fuzz cases, and we're going to add stats uh, elapsed as well. Um, we can just do that here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, use standard FS file, use standard IO write, that'll get us write and flush. Uh, we don't have stats locked, uh, 1048. Fuck it. And we can flush once at the end. File create coverage that text. Get access to the stats. Total cycles. Cool. So now we're going to be able to graph. We're going to get new coverage information. We're going to be able to read that out. Let's see. Coverage is being written, which is good. Which means I should be able to run python coverage.py. Coverage.txt, perfect. So we have the uh, number of fuzz cases, and then we have the uptime. Okay. Fuck yeah, this is my favorite part, man. Favorite fucking part. Uh, this is gonna be the fuzz cases, zero through nine plus. And we're then going to have the 0 through 9 dot plus time. So this is going to be the fuzz cases uptime. Uh, fuzz cases equals int fuzz cases. Uh, and then uptime is equal to float uptime. And here we go, PC info, uh, uptime, fuzz cases. 
Oops. We'll open another stream term. Uh, soft serve 6502 python coverage.py. Yeah, that looks like that works. Fuck yeah. So, we should be able to see the increases every time we get coverage. So, we'll do. Uh, We'll do uh, code coverage is equal to equal to len uh, is equal to this, and then this will be coverage is equal to oops is equal to this. So we'll do code coverage dot fuck it set update uh, with PC, and then coverage dot update pc info so now i have cumulative prints uh we'll print the fuzz cases as a percent 10 d this will do uh yeah ah percent 10 d this will be a uh 10.4 f uh 14.4 f for the uptime then we'll print the total amount of coverage as a 10F or a 10D and the uh, code coverage. So we've got fuzz cases, uptime, coverage. Uh, we'll do code coverage first and then coverage.lin. Coverage. Coverage. <laughs> I knew that seemed off. All right. Uh, is it this? Doesn't like the in? No, 23. What you unhappy about here? Prints. Another, another print? I got you. Uh, int. Not iterable. What? Int object. Can you not do a set of ints? Or am I not supposed to do update? Pretty sure that's how you do dictionaries in Rust. Right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how you do dictionaries in Rust. Or sets in Rust. What? PC? Int object not iterable? Oh, do I have to do this? Yeah, go fuck yourself. God. Is there a way to update in Python without doing the square brackets? Set has no... Oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> ah. Len. All right, there we go. So, we've got the fuzz cases. We've got all these counts. They look great. So, look at this. I can do... Uh, We'll just write this to a file. Um, uh, output is equal to this. Output plus equals this. Uh, open data dot text write dot write outputs, and then os dot system gnu plots plot the plots. Uh, we'll put that in persistent mode. Uh, SP plot dot plots plot data dot text using one th three with line uh, set log scale x that's required set x label um, number of fuzz cases. Set Y label, uh, unique code, uh, or code coverage. Bada bing. Son of a bitch. Uh, we gotta put a new line on this. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well, that looks very traditional. 
Uh, we'll do uh, set term X size 1440 by 900. There you go. There is our code coverage over number of fuzz cases. And then uh, we can also do it over time if we just switch that to a two. This is now over time. Fuzz cases over time. Cool. No Nessies. Um, yeah, really none of this coverage is really increasing. This kind of kind of sucks. Cool. Um, and let's take a look at. We'll do uh, title code coverage. And then we'll do uh, data.txt using one four with line title coverage. Now we'll see the two different lines. So this is register coverage. We can see that register coverage is still getting increases. Um, we'll set grid as well. And set x ticks 0 0.1. Can I do that? Is that the syntax? Um, set in x ticks 1. OK. 0 0.0. 0 .1. A lot of these things don't work well with logarithmic. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. So here we can see kind of an increase. It's hard to say if there's cause and effect there between the register coverage and that code coverage. Uh, so we have a relatively long run here that's plateaued. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna disable the, um, so now we're just looking at code coverage. We're gonna make a copy of data.txt and we're gonna call this regcov.txt. And then we're gonna make a, honestly, we'll just replace this. Uh, we'll call this, no reg cov, reg cov, uh, use one three. We're looking at the coverage between these two, reg cov dot text. Okay, so now we're gonna rerun it. We'll kill that. We'll get rid of register coverage, um, which is in the JIT, reg right. And we'll just comment this whole thing out. Now we don't have register coverage. And now we can see if that made an effect. All right, let's see what we got. Yep, so now coverage and code coverage match. It's what we would expect. We have no fuzz cases in yet. First fuzz case is starting to complete. There we go. Honestly, we got our crashes like immediately. Okay. So now, uh, history. I don't want to up arrow and copy data over the reg cov. All right, here are our comparisons. Um. Wow. Looks like almost no effect. But we'll see. Uh, we'll set log scale x, y, so we can zoom in a little bit more to those uh, top parts. Really? Um, x, y? There we go. Oh, uh, that actually made it worse to read, didn't it? Log scale x. Yeah, they're pretty much the same, which I'm not too surprised in this case. There's just not really, yeah, there's just not really much I'm collecting right now by saying that the register has been, uh, that it's been changed or that a, a modified version of it have been, has been seen. Um... No reg cov, yeah. No reg cov, it's, fall it's technically fallen behind.
<laughs> by one pixel. <laughs> yeah, now they're now they're at parity again. Okay. So that doesn't seem to have any effect. Uh, so we need to collect more data. That's what that is telling me, is I need to collect more information. So let's, uh, let's whack that back in here. Compare coverage, I don't think would be too huge here. Because everything's 8 bits. Maybe, I mean... So here's what we can do. We can we can keep red red cov on, but we can change the amount of mutation that we perform per. So we'll increase the we'll massively increase the full mutation and then here honestly we could actually decrease this to see. Now we're just tweaking things and we're going to see if we get different uh curves. And typically you'll find that you can get radically improved curves by just changing some of these variables. I don't know why, right? I don't have an explanation for these things, but uh, that's kind of how it works out in a lot of cases. Okay, we got cases coming in. Code coverage is almost at its 6K number. Everything is looking full speed now, which is great. Giving in. All right, let's see. I don't think that's helped us. It might have hurt us. The new line is the green line. I actually need to switch these. I'm a, I'm used to the uh, purple line being the new one. If the purple line's not the new one, I'm probably gonna make mistakes. So it looks like at the start, basically comparable. That makes sense. Uh, this is basically just noise floor here. And then up at these higher boundaries, it does indeed look like they're the same. Uh, it actually looks like RegCov is falling behind. Or the, the new one is falling behind. It's not RegCov. We're not tweaking that anymore. Oh, there you go. So right here, um, I'm going to set this to QT because I think QT has Zoom support. Dude, I want to turn off that anti-aliasing though. Zoom. What the fuck? On Windows, the zoom works. Oh, uh, maybe the zoom doesn't work in log scale. <sighs> Frustrating. Because this graph is unreadable without log scale. I can guarantee the fucking that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why we log scale our coverage axes. Like, or our fuzz case axes. <laughs> Because this tells me nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. God damn it. I really wish I could zoom in. Oh, turn off that anti-alias. Oh, that looks so much better. Why can't I zoom though? Uh, can I zoom without log scale? Let's see. Zoom. Click, 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 click. Dude, like, these buttons just don't work. I see. Uh, shift, control, control, shift, alt, shift. Nope. Right click, middle click, two click. Really? Uh... Genie plot terminal. This Linux. Let's see what kind of terminals they have. I have WXT. Is that the good one? We did it. WXT, man. WXT for life. God, that's so much better. Beautiful. All right. Little lesson on, on fuzzing and why fuzzing is basically the same fucking thing every time you run it. Um, 
if we take a look at these coverage things, almost all of the things that we see in the two runs are actually the exact same coverage events occurring. Like, uh, let's see. Let's zoom out. Let's take a look at, like, like almost all of them will spike at the same time. This spike right here, guarantee you it's this spike right here. Uh, actually, this spike right here is this spike. This spike is this spike. This spike is this spike. This spike is these two spikes combined. It's always the fucking same. Like, multiple fuzz runs are always the exact same. It's just kind of how it goes. Um, although, uh, I might literally have the same seeds. Uh, not that it really matters. Oh, there's enough noise in here, I think. Uh, am I getting any noise? I don't, I don't know. I will tell you, even if my seed is fixed right now, which it might be. Uh, RNG, uh, seed here. Seed cell. You size. Keep in mind we change parameters, which completely change the alignment of this. Uh, yeah, I, I am I am reseeding every time. It is a different seed. So, dude, it's just every fucking time you fuzz. I'm t I'm telling you, every time you fuzz, it's the exact same shapes. And this is why, like, actually. Here's one of the reasons why running a cover, uh, fuzzer indefinitely is just basically fucking pointless. So, like, look at this. It looks like we're, like, kind of getting a little bit of coverage here or there. But let me get rid of log scale. And I'll show you how much coverage we're actually gaining over time. Fucking none. <laughs> like, literally... About, like... 50 seconds in... It was done. It it was done. <laughs> and within like three seconds of the JIT being completed, the coverage was already like, um, or all of the crashes were already found. So when you run into issues like this, where you have shapes like this, you have to change your fucking fuzzer. Stop running fuzzers indefinitely. It's pointless. Look at this. I'm going to make this change. I'm going to add 26 lines of code to my fuzzer. Here you go. 26 lines of code added to my fuzzer. All right. Uh, let some of this data trickle in. Let's see how we're doing on coverage. Oh, we're slaughtering coverage. Let's put it back on log scale so we can read the graph. Look at that. That, my friend, is why you write better fuzzers instead of running shit forever. Because running fuzzers forever is absolutely pointless. Right? Those 25 lines of code. Look at that. Slaughtering it. It makes this look like a bitch. But yeah, that's, uh, yep. <laughs> so, like, in reality, I would love for my vectorized emulation to, like, pick up on some of these strings and automatically, like, solve for some of these things. There we got a nice little Nessie there. Um, but, it really depends on the workload. It's gonna work better on 64-bit. The, the 6502, literally everything is, like, reading and writing memory that it's going to be really, really difficult to actually find any differences uh, in kind of the different fuzz cases. But as you can see, making your fuzzer just a little bit better, in this case by randomly injecting strings into the input at random locations, we massively increased our coverage by a pretty significant margin. So, you know, do that. <laughs> it's important. It's really important. Um, yeah, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything. I would have to kind of look at the assembly to see uh, roughly what's happening. Uh, and then we can see. 
The pro I, I suspect that almost everything is being affected by the input on 6502 because, like, I, I don't know, actually. Let's, uh, Gitter does shitty code coverage coloring, so let's pull up uh, Vert Manager. Um, and let's pull up uh, Win7, we'll probably do. I think Ida runs in win seven. So we'll pull Ida into here. Yeah, fucking run as admin. Uh, Nick. Local. All right. Honestly, I need to set up uh, RDP. Let me get X free. RDP, perfect. Already fucking got it. CMD, CMD IP config, uh, release, renew. I want to make sure we're on the local IP because I switched the, the NIC setting over. Uh, yeah, 150. XV RDP, U, ad, administrator. Uh, v, oops, administrator v, is that the server, 192.168.100.150 was it? Uh, remote, allow remote access, fuck yeah, less secure, select users, admin is access, let's go, firewall, you know exactly how to configure firewalls. Off, off, off. There you go. Fixed. Nice. Yeah, I trust that cert. ASDF? Nope. ASDF, ASDF? Son of a bitch. No password? God damn it. Did I get creative with a password? No, there's no way I did. It's pr I probably. Oh, I have no password. I literally have no password. I don't know how to auth with RDP if I don't have a password. Perfect. Now we're locked out. P A S D F. Ho oh, ho, we're in. Fuck yeah. Oh, and this is the new version of XC free RDP where uh right control does give you a uh, window manager control. Okay, so we're going to do this. Do this. Vim dot Ida dot sh bin sh. I'm gonna do this, and we want like clipboard and shit. So we'll do uh, x free rdp uh, grep clip Oop, dash h. Uh, clipboard. You know, let's just take a look at some of the settings. I think I want clipboard plus clipboard would be good. I want fonts, clipboard plus fonts, what else, uh, geometry tracking channel, oh is there like resize, can I get arbitrary resize, that would be nice, support redirection, USB redirection, Um, is there a resize? Resize? Dynamic resolution. Oh, 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 yeah, buddy. Let's see if that works. I highly fucking doubt that works. <laughs> uh, chmon plus x ida.sh. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, I fucking knew that. Yeah, we'll just uh, set a fixed resolution to, how do I set the resolution? What is it, what is it, what is it? Orientation, parallel, res, so, res, Fuck. Uh, 
Uh, we're gonna SSH into this. Uh, yeah, there we go. Width and height, perfect. Bada bing. Woo! Okay, let's, uh, where did I run that? Eight. We'll move it to six. All right. Now I just go to grab Ida. Uh, do I have Ida anywhere here? Mount storage. Shit. Where's my Ida? Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to grab Ida off my offline network. Be right back.
God damn, my file server is not happy today. All right. Let's get it installed. Let's see what we got here. Oops. Uh, I'm going to redirect USB device. Oh God. Oh God, that crashed. No, it didn't. Where's my USB device? There it is. Okay, cool. All right, uh, next, yes, let's go. Let's go. I feel like this is an ancient ver version of Ida. What the fuck? I guess maybe I didn't download the most recent one. No, I probably have. Shit, I don't know where I put it then. Somewhere. Okay. Do to do to do do to do to do. Yeah, let's go. All right. We got the eiders. Yeah, this is ancient. This is like a year and a half old. Who fucking cares? 6502. 6502 hasn't changed. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, uh, November of two years ago. About two years old. Damn. Crazy to think Ida 7.2 is already two years old. Okay, so. I need to get the coverage file in here, and I also need Python. Hopefully, I got that here. Yep. And hopefully, I have, yeah, I have Notepad++. Nice. Okay, so I need to get the coverage file in here. That shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, we'll just... Open up a browser, and we'll go Python m http.server. Uh, 192.168.1. Uh, actually, we got to use Firefox. This fucking IE never works in this version. That looks good. Coverage.txt, nice. So we can write a parser for this. Um, yeah, we'll just save that. Save link as coverage.txt, perfect. And then we also have to grab, ah, oh, fuck. I forgot how to load this application. I forgot how to load the application. Kernel up program. We got kernel and kernel up program. See, see what I load. Whoops. I load kernel. With a bunch of these addresses. I wrote I wrote a fucking loader for this for Ida at one point. Oh my god. Oh, and then I deleted it on stream. Literally RM'd it. Ah, what do I do? Base main adder. Let's see, read. Do I read anything else? No. Uh, it's just directly the, the binary, I think. Load base. Load the whole thing to that. Set up the sections. Um... Yeah, what's load base? Payload.len, and then payload is, what's payload? Payload index, 
plus the the ROM delimiter. I see. I see I made a very nice file format here where you <laughs> you just search for this and then you load that at that address. You know what? I, I can make that work. Pretty easy. <laughs> Is that really what I fucking did? Wow. All right. Uh, yeah, we can uh, write a, a, a loader for this then. This is just kernel, save. Uh, we got to look at how to uh, Ida, loader. I forget, I forget the fucking syntax of this shit. I'm going to go into program files, Ida 7.2, loaders, and then I think that'll do, right? We'll just rename this... Uh, Folk 6502, open this with notepad. This should do the trick. Guess processor, load file, accept file. Okay. Check for that. If it's equal to that, then return format, ROM format name. Cool. Yeah, a little, that'll be pretty close. Uh, let's take a look. We're going to say if... I wonder if copy pasta works between these uh, these VMs. I don't think it will. Um, I don't know if that's in my if in the right clipboard. There we go. Let's see if this works. I said clipboard support, but holy shit, it works! <laughs> okay, so we can do a uh, LA. Li.read if li.read can uh, if this in li.read then uh, yeah <laughs> six five zero two <laughs> folk six five zero two <laughs> yeah fuck yeah <laughs> top quality right there yeah I get rid of this shit don't need this trash. If the format is equal to folk 6502, set the processor type to 6502, uh, seek to the end, tell, get the ROM signature, bunch of shit, don't really care about, add a segment, add entry, move segment, don't think I care. We'll, uh, we'll keep this stuff around because it looks like it might be important. Uh, we'll seek to seek set. Comment all this shit out. Yeah. Thoughts? Now I can go to downloads. I can take this, whack it in here, and unexpected indent. Okay, okay. Uh, is it that? Didn't like that? I don't know. We need, like, add seg, add entry, file to base. Ah, soon. Soon about good. Perfect. Comment that shit out. Doesn't really matter yet. I just want to make sure that this identifies it, uh... Two arguments to read. All right. All right. 4,096. Bye. Ooh, it didn't identify it. Uh, Kern start. Let's open that with notepad. What is this? Oh, yeah, I put the symbols in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I put symbols in here. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite this idle loader. I don't know. I'm in I'm in the fucking mood. Let's write some fucking Ida scripts. Folk 6502. If li.read8 is equal to folk 6502, then it's a folk 6502. Bam! It detected it! 
6502 not included? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll find a different version. Uh, M6502. Mm. There we go. Let's see. Boom. Bam. Doesn't contain anything. Yeah, of course it doesn't. Fucking course it doesn't. Okay. Perfect. We're making progress. Alright, so what did I do for the file format then? What else? So I guess then I have simis. I guess A A L space address space symbol name. I can I can parse that. I've parsed harder. RE regex is equal to reggy RG. I don't know. Regex.compile. Uh A L space zero through nine A through F lowercase or capital capital A through F plus put some little prens here. Hi bro for shielding. Is one monster okay when you still use monk? You need two things attacking you to get optimal shielding. And then we have a symbol. We'll do a non-greedy match. And then uh I don't know. Re dot all and uh, whack in like a new line here. Print li dot read thousand twenty four up a lot read a lot. Uh, and then rg dot find all on that. Let's see, is that the ballpark gonna work? Nope. Nope. li.read. No module read. Oh, regex. Whoops. Oh, fucking re. Dude, I'm struggling right now. Re. Wow. Wow, this happens. That's what happens. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks like a bunch of new lines and a bunch of the things that I wanted. Oh, perfect. Let's just get rid of the new line inside of there. And now we'll have all the addresses and the names. Bam. All the addresses and the names. Now we just have to load it. So now we have to load the header. We got to parse that header. I'm just going to pull it up on another screen here, probably. Um, actually, because copy pasta works, I think I can... <laughs> Brilliant. Dude, this, uh, this RDP thing got a lot fucking better. Okay, so... Then we get to the end. I'm going to look for that string. So I guess I want that string. Cool. And that end in an eight. I just want to make sure it's the right one. It is. We're good. Okay. Um. RDP thing. What are you using? X free RDP. X eleven RDP or some some shit like that. Kernel start this. Uh. We'll just read the whole fucking file. I don't care. File is equal to li.read. That's enough. li.seek0seek set. So seek it to the front. Read it. Uh, location is equal to file.find. This print location should work. Uh... Then I can say header is equal to file location colon uh, struct dot unpack. These are, I guess I did 64 bits for these, didn't I? How many do we have? 12? 12L. Uh... 
lock plus 12 times 8 header. Yeah, that's pretty close. Load base. I don't I don't have vim so I can't do regex in here which makes you, makes me pretty sad. So I'm going to have to just manually type these out. Uh, stack start stack size startup size once size code size ro data size data size bss size main adder fuck yeah and then payload is equal to file lock plus 12 times 8 colon uh, we're gonna add a segment do I need to do that? Can I just do this file to base here? li file to base li seek zero. Uh, seek lock plus 12 times 8. File to li file to base at start load base plus len payload. Load base, might be ballpark. Seek set. Really? Really? Ida API dot seek set, okay, fine. Fine. Uh, unpack requires a 48. Ooh, didn't I do that? 12 times 8? Isn't that... No. That's 72. Um, I'm reading... Oh, I read. Ah. I'm reading their 16-bit things. Hey, <laughs> H. 12 times 2. Well, I'll be damned. I don't know why I don't have a scroll bar in Ida. Seems like everything breaks if you don't define a segment, so uh, I think we're going to add a segment here. <laughs> add a segment at load base, load base, plus len payload. That looks good enough. Uh, seek. Ida API dot seek set probably doesn't default to set. Let's try this. What is going on? Is this the offset file to base? Do you not need to seek? Why was there a seek then? Um. So I guess I do lock plus twelve times two. There. Oh, that's. I'm just guessing that's the argument that I want. Yeah, it looks to be the case. One, two, eight, nine. Is there a current start in here? Uh, find this. Needle is equal to this. Needle plus len needle. Okay, that should be better. All right, loaded at a at thousand, which is good. And how are we looking on code here? We parsed all those things out and then we did lock plus 12 times two. That looks pretty accurate. Let's go to, uh, let's go uh, make code, is it? Make code, code. Fuck. God damn it, it's been a while. Well, I guess we need to apply symbols, so we'll do... Um... Did I get rid of the print? Yeah, I did. Okay, for... Adder name in re.findall file. Uh, re find all, rg find all, adder is equal to int adder 16, 
going to make name, make under name, name, set name. That looks good. Address name. Okay. Set name, adder name, and then uh, code. Mark uh, set code, code. What is the fucking code thing? God damn it. Um, Mark, son of a bitch, code. Disassemble, I'm trying to think what it is. Define, get funk, set color. God, what, what is it? Isn't it make code or something? I thought it was like make. I swear it is like make code. Some shit. Um. What? What is it? Patch previous address. Read. Is it just code? All system convert create byte create instruction okay that'll do all right uh, what do you mean set names not defined Oh, that might be an IDC. Oh. Yeah, ignore those. Those don't matter. Oh! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> and the symbols fucking worked. Yeah, there we go. Load A, load X. Jump to zero BSS. Jump to main. Here's main. Here we're doing some starters. Doing some pushes. Doing some stuff in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, bet, I was not fucking expecting that to just all fucking work right away. <laughs> oh, okay. Where's the actual code? C tags, main. There we go. Ah, oh, here we go. Here's C tags. Nice. To <laughs> okay, let's automatically parse that fucking coverage file. Let's fucking, let's just load that shit right in there. <laughs> oh, this is too good. Uh, coverage RE, I think I already had that. It's probably faster to yoink it. Yeah, finder. You know what? That'll get us close enough. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Automatically apply coverage coloring? Why the fuck not? Why? Why not? Dude, making loaders and Ida is the play, dude. Make that a regex string so we don't have to worry about it. Read that shit. Int. Let's print uh, fuzz cases. That should. I just want to see if that prints. Should. Kernel. Kernel. Don't save. Hmm. Oh, it just printed a lot. I see. Okay. All right. Uh. The raw string? It's, oh, yeah, it's not the regex string. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, coverage is equal to... Why, why do I call it the... I mean, you use it a lot when making regex. That's, that's why. That's why. Uh, coverage, uh, reg, right, 
coverage dot updates mm, PC actually coverage equals dictionary uh, coverage um, coverage PC is equal to uh, info, uh, actually coverage PC is equal to zero, coverage PC is equal to, I don't want to do that, um, if PC not in coverage, isn't there a way of doing this with like entry coverage PC equals info, else, uh, max, thank god, coverage, PC, info. Okay, and then, uh, then, for coverage, uh, PC, cov type, in coverage, dot iter items, is that it for this one? Is this Python 2? Editor items. I think this is Python 2. Set color. Uh, Ida API dot set color PC. Whoa. Whoa. Oh god. What have I done? Um honestly we don't even need that output window or the function. Ah, whatever. Uh, set color. What? Call what? What are the different call what's? Get color sick item. Set the color for this item. And we'll set it to, uh, if there's coverage, we're just going to set it temporarily to OX. Uh, uh, C O C O C O. Is that a good one? Is that a good color? Oops. Coverage. Where's that typo? The fuck is that typo? Ah, Max. Boom. Set color. Is this IDC? I don't care. <laughs> it's kind of fucking guessing. Sick item. Sick. Yay! Okay. We got... We got coverage. That's kind of an ugly color. Let's go a little bit lighter. Let's go like Dio Dio Dio. That sounds better. It's still not great. Yo, is that a good? It's really tough to pick these colors, man. Oh, that looks nice. That looks really nice. I like it. Okay. Uh, if cov type is equal to zero, PC coverage. Elif cov type is equal to one. Reg write coverage. Uh, we'll make this a little bit more red. That's super red. I think that's probably an acceptable level of red. That's a little too red. Let's pop it up a bit. We'll go to, uh, we'll go this, uh, and then CO. This is, this is, oh, that's going to be a good red right there. That's going to be like a salmon. Well, I can't tell those fucking colors apart. Um... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to go to AO. <laughs> oh.
All right. So, is this really true? I got regex on my money, and money on my regex. All right, let's uh, let's go to main. So I think we start executing in main. Wow, I'm used to. Uh... Okay, yep, yeah, we start executing in main. Obviously, we don't influence anything yet, which is great. I wouldn't expect to. Uh, then we go into C tags main. C tags main don't influence anything until here. Ooh, L buff, load buff. Uh, that's that's an influenced value. Beautiful. Compare. Oh, you know what? A lot of these things we're actually not going to see influence on because we're not we're not switching the um, command line flag. It's the we're giving the same command line flags to all lanes, so we're actually not going to see those. Um, being modified. So these are obviously all touched. X flag, find entries. Let's take a look in here. Oh, yeah. There we go. So ADC. That's, yep, bunch of red. Like I said, a lot of things are influenced by user input. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, C entries. <laughs> it's fucking everything. God damn it. Really? Really? <laughs> hmm. I'm, I might. I might have to press X here to doubt. I don't have my colors backwards, do I? No. How would literally? How would a jump? Oh. Uh, yeah, how to jump update? How to jump have a divergent register set? Okay, okay, okay. We probably we probably have a mistake. Um, reg writes permute val to all of these. Perm q. No k mask. We then get ZMM0, KMask. Using KMask, we compare with the ZMM0 into temp KMask, all the ones that are equal. We XOR. That'll determine if any of them are not equal. Is that correct? Temp KMask. This will be a subset of this. If this is 0, and thus this is 0, yeah, I think that's correct. We align that, uh, look up cur PC, and then we update PC here, most recent PC. I shouldn't be getting rid of int starts, so that should be fine. Huh. I'm trying to think. Why would these be, why would these registers be affected? Am I? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I know what it is. It's the I count register. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have a the 6502 lifter. That's It's using an I count register. I count. This is going to be target mute. Set it to not track I count. Basically, if the instruction counts are ever different. Yeah, that was fucked. This will be much less aggressive. Before, basically, it was almost double. You know, not counting instruction counts uh, might be a pretty big perf speed up, too. We don't get to see our a billion instructions per second, but who cares? Fuzz cases per second is all that matters at the end of the day, you know? All right, so... Those, those numbers look a little bit more sane now. Yeah. 8,008. Uh, okay. That looks so much better. That looks so much better. Okay, let's grab that coverage file. Uh, let's delete coverage by test app. Oh, coverage here. Save. Save. 
Cool. And then we'll just reload it. <laughs> Whoop. Boop, boop, bop. There we go. This is probably more correct. C tags main. Here we go. We got that light color for things that have coverage. Then we have things that are influenced. Beautiful. There shouldn't be too much in this function. Uh, I guess this is probably, yeah, preload entries. Um. I forget what that does. I don't know if we're supposed to be hitting that. V flag, X flag. Oh, maybe we're not hitting the command line flags correctly. Yeah, we got we got coverage we gotta figure out. So what we really care about is find entries. Find entries, this is what's going to start looking through the input. It looks like we have 100% coverage in here, uh, except for this. We haven't hit this condition. This is an overflow case on a stack. Um, same with this one. It's going to be a stack check if we exhaust the stack, yeah. Because uh, this is a this is a software stack comparison here. So we have perfect coverage in everything in here. Fan fucking tastic. And here we can see, yeah, those the red looks more correct now. So I can refresh this, save this as coverage, replace it, reload the file, and we'll get the latest and greatest copy. Okay, main, C tags main, in here, all this shit, preload entries, find entries, this is the, this is where some good shit happens, uh, we got coverage of everything in here, these are the different interpreters, we have Y entries for some file format, which I don't remember what it is, we've got L entries for I think Lisp, I think this might be, uh, I don't know. And then C entries, this is the C parser. Um, once again, it looks like almost everything's red. Hmm. Hmm. Why would that happen? Why would that happen? Why? Yeah. Coverage, that's much lower. I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm updating every instruction. I don't think I'm updating PC, reg write. Um, reg write. Let's open up the uh, 6502 JIT. Or lifter. Uh, reg write PC. Oh, why well, am I writing PC? I don't fucking need that. I mean, that shouldn't be different. Track I count. If track I count, which I set to false. Yeah. Track I count is false. Um, so I shouldn't be writing those I counts. Otherwise, I'd see a lot more registers being used. Let's make sure we have the right kernel... Or the coverage file. Oh my god, dude. I didn't sync down the file. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Um, it's on a remote server. So I need to uh, I need to pull it down. <sighs> That'll do. That'll copy it down. Perfect. There's our coverage. Oh, I was like, dude, that looks exactly the same. And you know what? When the data looks the same, typically means it is. Cool. All right, that's better. Yeah, it, it was iCounts. Okay, yeah, now that is, that makes sense. That is no longer influenced, because that made no sense to be influenced. All right, main. Here we go, we're going into main. Yeah, nothing is influenced here yet, perfect. That's great, I wouldn't expect it to. And then in here, uh, we won't see anything influenced uh, because we're passing the exact same flags in every command, I guess this is probably reading something user-influenced. Store X, calic. Oh, um, this is user-influenced because the address is. Uh, the, alloc the address return from calic, uh, the bottom byte changes between some of the VMs. So uh, that might actually lead to some... 
um, kind of spurious user controlled things because they're different uh, allocators. Like a lot of these things could just be to be due to um, having different addresses for those allocators. So let's see what I can do to fix that. Um, uh, we don't care about that. That's perfect. So in this case, uh, elk base context elk base. I could do a per VM allocation base, and then they'll be a little bit more similar. Uh, on remerges, there's going to be some issues potentially where things are still going to get thrown off. So I kind of don't like that. That's a little annoying. Elk base, active allocations. Yeah, what I could do is I could set... Uh, I gotta have them all try and give the same base. Um, I don't know how many dynamic allocations they're doing. I mean, basically, my libc thing just sucks here. Um, I really want to make sure that I'm giving the same allocation bases. I guess I checked add. I round to 64. Uh, that actually... If we round to 64, they might get the same base. So we're going to do this. We're going to do uh, vmid, elk base, vmid... VMID, uh, VMID, active allocations, insert elk pointer, fucking great, elk base, um, equals elk base vector width, and then, I don't know if I pull in vector width, I can just hard code it as 8, I don't fucking care, then here, allocation base per VM, boom. So now we have a different allocation base per VM, and then we also want to have active allocations. We're going to make this per VM as well. Perfect. Elk base, um, active allocations, uh, for thing in vm.context mute dot iter mute thing dot clear. Clear the active allocations. Now we're at least going to have different trackings here. VMID.inserts, active allocations, down here, VMID remove, active allocations up there, looks good, hash map, I think that should implement default, so I think we're good. Let's go, intermute uh, 3D5 on, uh, this is the allocations. Whatever the name of that is, active allocations. Oops. Clear all those. Uh, set the base to the to the same for all of them, and now they'll get the same ordering of allocations. If we have remerges, like pretty severe remerges, then we might end up seeing some of those values. Uh... There we go. There we're now we're down to the two different crashes because they're getting the same addresses for those allocations again. Uh, fantastic. So that will eliminate a lot of the noise, not all of it. If we, if we ever support remerging, if we ever support bringing things online, um, then there's always a chance that we'll end up bringing something online after a function executed and the heap's in a different state, and then they'll, there'll be divergence there. Um, but I think in this case, we're probably relatively safe. So I'm going to let this grow a little bit. I'm going to let this Nessie out kind of plateau, finish off saving these inputs, um, and then we'll grab that coverage and move it over to Ida. So these keep growing pretty stable, which is nice. Let's take a look at our graph, what we got here. Beautiful. Nothing too crazy. Register coverage is actually going to be doing meaningful things now. Um, that's great. 7153. Cool. I don't know what our record coverage numbers are, but I should probably keep track of those so I know uh, roughly how far we've made it. So, just over a million fuzz cases now. Let's uh, let's pull this down. Let's see what we get. Now we get the latest one. Looks good. No coverage increases in a while. Spin up the server. 
update this file, replace it, and whack that in here. Don't save, reload, and we're good. So go on the main, nothing controlled here. So this should be much more accurate. There you go. Here we don't see that register being affected anymore because it's getting the same address. Beautiful. That's what I like to see. Uh, here, this is getting a different value, this head. Load a head. What is head? Head inf? Head. Interesting. All right, so that's, that's the first thing affected by user input. It's pretty cool. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, head. Huh. And then or A, of course, that is affected as well. Uh, branch not equal. Um, okay. Looks good. Got another head here. Perfect. Uh, put entries. What do we got? Load A. These are loading things from the stack. Uh, that makes sense because I think put entries can be entered from multiple locations. So we probably end up resyncing uh, put entries through a couple different call sites. Bunch of the different uh, locations that are affected. Okay. The C tags main. X flag. Head. Out F. Put entries. I think that's freeing everything. Preload entries. We're not hitting, are, are we hitting this at all? We're not. There's some stuff in here. Okay, it's kind of curious why we won't be hitting that. Uh, these, I, I think a lot of these weird paths here that are doing these operations are handling stack overflows, and this is like propagating the like stack subtraction to the next, um, uh, to the next byte. Because the stack is a 16-bit address, and this has to do it byte at a time, so it's looking for like the rollover, and then if there's rollover, it's probably gonna modify that next next field. Uh, here we see this calyx coming through, looking good. Uh, search R. Okay, we're not seeing those. That's interesting. Optarg. Okay, not seeing that. V flag, X flag. Init, interesting, preload entries, and then here, find entries. This is where the meat starts happening. This is where it's gonna determine, I think, the file format. Line number, interesting, so that varies, cool. Then we got L entries here, what do we got? We got pretty good coverage. Once again, looks like a stack overflow condition there. Uh, this one, BNE, it's hard to say if that one is. Two, okay. Yeah, that looks like code that we might be missing. Hard to say. C entries. Yeah, look at this. Get C. F get C. Load Y. Uh, store AXYSP. And then compare X with FF. These flags, the flags, the resulting flags from this comparison are affected by... The result, and I think it's because it returns probably X for F get C. So yeah, here we go. Here are all the characters. This is checking the characters in A. Uh, this is checking, I think, the A register. Yeah, and the A register is. Let's see if we move into that. That's probably what we got from F get C. Yeah, load A X Y S P. Store A X Y S P forty six. Yeah, we store to 46, 47 we load, Y. Oh, that loads AXYSP, okay. But yeah, here we see all the characters that we're affecting uh, from the input file. F get C, we have another 2A here. Oh, beautiful. That is awesome. That is so cool. Yeah, I can just see all of the things that are affected by user input at this point. Beautiful. Mem compare, yeah, like mem compare. The results of this are affected. 
Beautiful. RTS, uh, this being affected means that the um, like return address probably is being affected. Increment Y, the load result, the compare result, the flags. Uh, in this case, JSR, B and E. You know what? I think due to the massive amount of functions that are used, uh, since basically everything is a function in 6502, I actually am not surprised register coverage isn't really getting us much because the like register states are kind of being consumed by a lot of these where they're being handled here. And once I see unique coverage in these functions, it's covered forever and it's not going to cause new inputs to get generated like based on some of those comparisons. So I think uh, register coverage just isn't gonna do much in this target. Now, I'd like to theorize how I could make it do more. 7244 coverage. All right, how did we get there? Did we Nessie? Yeah, look at that. Here we got a like 50 increase in coverage. And this is at fuzz case 1.4 million. So let's go take a look at uh, the coverage that we got at 1.4 million. Uh, refresh, save, yes, replace this. I'm just curious what coverage was like found that late, right? So this is a very common thing that I do as a researcher. So here I'm gonna look for uh, fuzz case 1.4 million. We got a yeah we got a really big Nessie in this in this ballpark, and they look like they're all relatively related. Let's check this out. S skip comment. It looks like we hit like a whole new path in skip comment. In fact, we have basically everything covered here. Uh, except for this compare x0, but it doesn't look like we directly influenced that. Uh, 593, FTEL, we're hitting some different states in FTEL. Um, LSEQ, we're hitting some different states. I wonder if we hit like an EOF condition that caused us to hit some different states. 22, Funk Entry. No idea what that is, but... Uh, we influence stuff in it. Cool. Good to know. Uh, what else we got here? Well, we got a lot of stuff. Put entries here. This is going to... Uh, I think this goes through and loops through and frees up all the resources. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is a recursive function that uh, I think calls free on everything. Oh, put... I think that's what prints it to the screen. Yeah, yeah. Put entries prints it to the screen. Okay. All right, late coverage here, uh, different case on a skip comment. Let's go real late. Let's look at the most recent coverage entry we got. Uh, we got a bully queue on a skip comment. Okay, 25. Uh, that's the load. These are all these are all the same. This one's different. We hit, uh, oh, interesting. We saw a Sturcher effect uh we saw like a different return from a searcher which is interesting huh so i think what i might want to do due to the massive amount of inlining and jsr routines or not the opposite opposite of inlining i think i might want to make uh some of this coverage information based on like call stacks and chains so I'm just kind of peeking around to try and see like roughly where I'm getting new coverage at. Put entries again. Uh, nothing here has been too shocking. So we haven't gotten new coverage in a while. Let's see, uh, 7244, I think that's where we were before. No new coverage on register coverage either. So I think that means we're pretty stalled out. We're getting like little boops here or there. This was like, a non-zero. This is basically we probably hit like a new block. <laughs> That's it. We probably hit like one new block in like some edge case. But uh, oops. Cool. All right. Yeah. Let's uh, let's see what we get with the new register coverage. I don't think we're gonna be able to make up for this string injection stuff. I I, I really don't. I think it's too. It's too good. It's too good. I'd love to see this hit 7,000. 
coverage, but I don't think it's going to do it. It hits all the crashes, which is good. One unique crash in. Second one's actually taking a while uh, to pump through here. Um, one thing I could do is decrease the corruption. 6121, actually. Oh, 6125. Yeah, we see that a lot. One unique crash. It still hasn't found the other crash. I don't know if this is just a crazy anomaly. 6151. I'm going to turn down the corruption. I'm going to turn up the initial corruption. And I'm going to turn down... Oh, I already turned that down. Fuck it. I'll turn it up then. <laughs> Fuck it. Just to see if that does anything. I don't think it will. 6151s. None of them are to beat at 45 seconds. 6151 at 45. Wow. This is actually climbing really fast. I don't remember how much it plateaus. Um, 6084. Let's see. Come on. Come on. So, typically, the more corruption you have, the faster the initial ramp up of coverage, but the worse the, like, future coverage prospects are. Because the more you corrupt, um, the more you explore, but the less you corrupt, the more that you build off of your existing input in a meaningful way. Um, that's a really common thing. I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna go really low corruption, just see how that kind of affects things. Mod 2, that's always gonna be 1. I uh, will go mod 8 here. So these are gonna be very slightly mutated, uh, from the original input. In fact, I think I don't want this. I think I don't want the initial mutation pass. I only want to do a mutate here, and we're gonna do it really light, per VM. We're going to pick an input, mute it up to four. Now, sometimes you have to do large amounts of mutation because you aren't going to, like, get a leap. Um, sometimes you need to change multiple bytes for an actual huge effect to occur. Uh, 5,900. That got there fast, but we've seen that before. 6044. Nice. Six one oh six at thirty four. Six one one two. Okay, this is basically on par. It's actually performing a little bit better, but nothing too crazy here. But I, I would really like to see it make some progress down a hard path. Um, so I could try and see what it's getting stuck on. It's probably getting stuck on a, a mem compare, and mem compare. I'm just hitting all of the coverage states. So I think unless I make this path aware. Um, I'm just not going to be able to get to 7,000 without those strings. Like, I'm going to hit mem compare once. I'm going to get full coverage of mem compare, and it's going to just be game over from there, basically. So, yeah. Um, let's see how I'm doing my hashing on my reg right. I guess I should leave that running. Reg right. That'll call this, and that handles the hashing for me. Um. I might want to switch away from PC. Uh, I can do PC hashes of like the most recent PCs. Um, what's a good way of doing that? I can also do call site. Uh, I would need to dedicate a register to holding. Let's see if I have any free registers right now. I don't know if I do. Hmm. ZMM, yeah, I'm using basically everything. I could drop ZMM29. Um, how did I do this before? Um, fuck. Mm, 
Yeah, I think I computed, I think I used to run a stack, uh, not a stack hash. I think I used to run a hash of all instructions as they were executed. So let's try that. Let's, uh, let's go into, let's get rid of uh, ZMM29. We're going to get rid of that. ZMM29 is going to be dedicated for, I think we still have enough aisle registers. ZMM29, this is going to be the, like, uh, instruction trace hash and then we'll get rid of it from the register allocator and then that gives us control of ZMM29 uh, so when we do a run we're going to clear those out we're just gonna do self dot uh, self dot states dot aisle regs 29 uh, equals vector splat zero um, reset the path hash okay so 6158 is the number to beat uh, and let's actually just save that graph that's like our our best graph that's going to be our uh, copy data dot text to reg cov So these should be the same now. What? What? Copy data to text to regcov.txt. Why am I seeing different lines? Oh, because uh, I didn't run it. There we go. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we have the that graph archived. And 6158, 6158 is the number to beat. So let's hop over to, that has splatted out that path. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into the JIT. We're gonna go into uh, ZMM29 is what we did. Yeah, 29. So at inst start, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do assembly dot uh, vector packed XOR quad word of ZMM 29, um, oops, VREG ZMM 29, using KMask, we're going to XOR with ZMM 29, and we'll pull in a uh, PC here, CSPC. Okay. Uh, this is just going to XOR together all PCs observed. And we're going to probably want to add a rotate in there as well. Uh, missing closing delimiter. Yeah, here. So X, XOR together all the PCs. This is going to give us like a unique kind of trace value PC here as U64. CSBC, that should be good. Okay. So we're going to do a assembly.vp uh, rotate left quadward vreg zmm29 kmask vreg zmm29 uh, immediate 3 so we're going to we're going to rotate the pc to the left by 3 and then we're going to xor on the pcs that's going to hopefully add in a little bit of entropy into this like unique address which is going to be great. So obviously that's not going to do anything yet because we haven't plumbed it into anything. So we're going to go down to reg right. And on this, we're going to do um, – I'm going to take an RBX. I'm going to extract the path hash. What am I doing here? Because I'm not reporting all of the different uh, coverages here. I only am going to do this once. Oh, is that the issue? Is that the issue? Do I not want this to replace itself? Oh, uh, once I see it once. Um, yeah, let's get rid of this then. 
Let's get rid of the cur PC to here. We're going to get rid of this. So we're going to always record this information. This should potentially cause a perfect. I don't know how bad it's going to be. It shouldn't be too bad because this is our common case, no divergence. In the case of divergence, um, I think I might want to store the register values I've seen. Son of a bitch. CC chat. What's going on here? Well, I broke something. It's not ZMM29, is it? Can't be. I removed that from the allocation queue. Is it this? What in here would matter? Get instruction address, call. I, sh I should be able to get rid of this. What did I change? What did I change? I'm, I don't think I'm using ZMM29 for anything. I, if I am, I should have that commented and I shouldn't be using it for register allocation. Okay, so for some reason we can't call this multiple times. Um, is this a threading issue? Is this a race condition? Shouldn't be. Just calling. Crash read 55. What? What? Call CC JIT. That is bizarre. Let me get rid of these and just make sure this is not the issue. It, sh it should not be. Sh it sh shouldn't be. It's possible, but it shouldn't be. Let's see what you got here. Nope. Accessing 55. Same error. Why would that fault? Call that. Uh, oh, do I have like really bad race conditions in that? I might be relying on not reporting things twice, maybe. It's kind of gross. Why would I do that? It's kludgy. Okay, so it's clearly an issue with the call. That makes sense. Let's take a look at our code coverage. Code coverage jits here. What are we doing? Deref those. Load some random numbers. Uh, perform some hashing. Set the vector width. Extract the hash. Move it to the hash table. And it off. Bit test and set if it's never been reported. Uh, already reported. Already reported ret. Oh. Um. At RSP8. Okay, that's just going to ret. And then that. This shouldn't clobber anything. Already reported jump carry. Uh, we're going to have... RDX, racks, RDX, XMMs, racks, RDX, RSI, RDI. Dude, I feel like I should be able to call this. What would this what would this possibly affect? Is it something with the already reported path? Because that returns out here. No diverge. CC JIT. V from Q, determine the mask, XOR, check, go to no diverge. Dude, I, I have no idea.
What would that be corrupting? Rat, rat. Clearly that call. I'm gonna get rid of this jump carry. I'm gonna have coverage always reported. That's gonna cause it to always fall through and report the coverage. See what that does. Fifty-five. Okay, so it's not that. I I don't get it. Uh, I guess I can just start adding rets. Let's add a ret here. <laughs> Let's see if that breaks it. Crash read. It's like I'm having an ILR get corrupted. That's fine. And we should have cases coming in. Looks good. Normal crashes. Okay. So that's fine. Let's put one here. Pointer to the hash table can be found at there. Yep. This looks fine. Uh, okay, there's anding in the code coverage bit. Did we not allocate enough room there, maybe? Well, that's anding it. It's not doing the actual bit test yet. Okay, cool. Here's the bit test and set. RDX. I guess we're seeing, whoa, what, what? Okay, so ret there is fine. Let's put a ret here. Already reported is just a ret. Those are, those are literally the same paths. I don't think it's that jump carry. It's not. Uh, dude, that's so weird. Is that this here? Dude, what is going on? That's fine as well. That would mean it's an issue on like K masks on entry exit. Um, ooh, ooh. Do I special case 29? No, I don't. 29, I save or store from that. And that should be fine. I don't. Yeah, if we get rid of the 29 stuff, it doesn't matter. I didn't get creative. Nope. What the fuck? I actually have no idea what's happening here. The KMAS should be fine. If I don't do this call, it's fine. Um, raw bytes. That's int start. Reg right. Vprom Q, no K mass, zoom M zero. Ooh. 
Maybe there's something relying on ZMM0. That would be a violation of the like calling convention that I have, but maybe that's what's happening. Right target, vprim q. A perm, zmm zero. We're fucking up temp k mask. Is that an issue? No, I don't think so. No one can be no one can be relying on temp k mask across instruction boundaries. That would be a big issue. Um. Oh shit. Am I required to store the PC? Yeah, that's what it is. That's totally what it is. <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. It doesn't know where to return back into the code. So it's just returning back to some, like, stale location. So it must be... R10 must be where I have that. R10 exit value? Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is. Right here. That's now correct. And this won't crash. Wow, that was that was a uh, that was a doozy. Okay, we're computing this hash, which is great. Good, 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 good. We've got this coverage. Looks good. One unique crash. <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> All right, now what that means is I can grab the path hash. I'm going to broadcast the path hash of, I don't care, just one of the ones that's running. So we're going to perm queue. Technically, I'd want to report these separate. This is not quite exactly complete register coverage. It's a little hacky. Uh, a perm here, vreg, zmm29. We're going to perm that out, and then we're going to extract it into rbx. Um, the move Q. That's what we want. So we're going to load that into our BX. And this is basically going to cause like infinite coverage, I think. I think I need to mask that down. But I just want to see if it's like highly high entropy, which it should be. We should just have absurd coverage. God damn it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, coverage is, is just, yeah. Woo! Beautiful. Okay, perfect. So we're going to mask that. We're just going to do a, a asm dot v vector packed and quad word vreg zmm0 k mask uh actually no k mask vreg zmm0 csbc ff so we're going to mask it off to decrease the amount of possible values um and then uh, we'll just do an add, add rbx1. We just want to make sure that it's a non-zero value, otherwise it will get counted as code coverage. So we take the path hash, we end it with ff, we extract it into rbx, then we add one to it, and then that is our magic identifier for coverage. So let's see what happens. We're going to have some coverage explosion, but I want that. Let's bring it on. 41,000, 2,600 inputs. That's looking better. 50,000, 52,000. Love it. Much better. 5902 coverage. Yeah, keep, keep popping up. I just want it making inputs. Whenever it discovers something new, make a fucking input. That's all that matters. If you're not making inputs, you're throwing away CPU time. 60, 70. 
Come on. Dude, I want to see that 7,000. So bad. So bad. 6.14. Yeah, I might need to... <laughs> Surprisingly, that didn't really hurt performance much. Even though we're creating so many coverage events. Do I understand that we're doing vectorized emulation fuzzing right now? Yes, we are. Still making inputs. Fuck yeah. Million fuzz cases. Come on. Now, one issue is that this is diluting the pool of inputs. So it's harder to find like the code coverage inputs and code coverage inputs are more likely to cause an increase. We're definitely like hurting that in that regard. We could change our mask value, maybe decrease that a bit. But I don't know, storing some information about the um, the value that's being written would also be really useful. I'll have to look into my old stuff, what I did for uh, register coverage, but I know it worked really well. So I think there are some like techniques that I'm not using right now. I mean, literally wrote this just now. Okay, the crash comes in. That's good. Coverage is looking good. We're still creating good inputs. Remember that these inputs are already really close to what like the code coverage inputs were as, as well, but weighting these inputs would be really useful. But ultimately with 6502, it's just when literally everything is a call, it's going to be really difficult, really fucking difficult uh, to mark these things as unique uh, code locations. 6133, 6141, that's good. I just want 7,000, but I don't think I'm going to hit it. I basically need to make it through like a... a Six byte mem compare. Oh, and that's just gonna be really difficult. I just I don't think I'm gonna be able to hit it. I'm fuzzing fast though. <laughs> at least that's uh at least that's good. Sixteen thousand fuzz cases per second. Sixty one fifty one. Fifty-five. This would be something I could leave overnight and see if it would find that seven thousand. I just want to like see whether or not it could do it. Um, it is a pretty big leap for this. Like, if I literally just instrumented mem compare, or fed back random bytes from the like input binary itself into the stream, we would definitely break seven thousand because we're just getting so many fuzz cases. 6159, it's always difficult to know whether or not you're actually, like, pushing through calls. Like, if we're getting closer and closer and closer, and then once we, once we get close enough, we're going to snap, and it's going to shoot up to 7,000. But we are seeing pretty consistent growths here. Uh, let's see how this compares. Yeah, we are outperforming for this range. But at this point, we're basically at parity without the uh, register coverage, which, yeah, I just don't think we're going to make much with this. I, I need better path awareness, but anyways, I think I'm going to call it there. I'm pretty happy with this. Got some serious work done today. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's definitely within a margin of error the same. But, all right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. See you all around.